Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to another amazing episode of Local Marts Fishing. Mark the B-Man, how are you? Hi all skate nights. Skate nights. Ooh, well I don't know, bass nights. We definitely won't get a skate where we are, but we'll, we'll catch a bass. Well, we'll definitely catch a bass. We might catch some European eels as well, but we'll definitely 100% get bass. So this is a bass fishing session, ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare for an evening of chucking the baits around. Ragworm, ideally. I'm hoping it doesn't rain because it looks like it's threatening to, but it's not forecast to. As Danny Crane joins us here this evening. Danny, how do you do? We're having a go. Jackie is there, exciting times. As you join us here for a little bit of bass fishing, James Bryant joins us here this evening also. Ryan Tune is in the house. Lovely to see you joining us here this evening as we prepare to catch bass. That's guaranteed. We will catch bass. Lynn, how you doing? All right. Nice to see you in. Thomas Smith is there and Donna joins us. So, um, yes, we are going to chuck the baits in and I guarantee you uh, we will catch bass. I can't guarantee we'll catch a massive one. Is that a chocolate bass night, Mark the B-Man? It could well be. We'll see how it goes. Penny D's there. Dean Barraclough joins us. So, I, it, well, as soon as those rods are in, I think the action... Well, I won't say that. I was going to say the action might go straight away, but we just don't know. We'll get the rods in and we'll see... What happens? We're playing it by ear initially as Vicky Irie joins us. Get those bass, Vicky. I'm hoping for a decent one from here today. You know, I'm hoping for a decent one. We'll see how it goes. Right, let's get some bait on, get it in. Bass fishing tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Loads of ragworm. So we've got a single pulley rig with a, a long snood and we've got a one up, one down. So we've got size 2.0 circular hook on the pulley rig and they're about 2.0s as well on the one up, one down. Just giving it a light chuck. There's a fair bit of seaweed here now. At a certain time of year, you can't fish this really because there's massive swathes of seaweed. The seaweed at the minute is on the ground. But one day we'll have a big spring tide come for it and it'll lift all that and take it out to sea. But then we start getting seaweed when we're beach fishing.
Right, this is the tour. Here we go. Bass Fishing 101, ladies and gentlemen. Nice couple of light little chucks. Beautiful. Right, I don't think we'll run out of ragworm tonight unless we do it intentionally and just start loading tons of worm on because we've got loads of it. We were donated a tenner's worth last night and about another 15 quid's worth today by the Solar Warrior. Uh, Cyrus, say you're doing bring on the silver bars. Absolutely. Absolutely. David Tyken and Fishing, lovely to see you there, mate. Hang on, tap straight away. There you go. I told you it wouldn't take long, ladies and gentlemen. The only blue lights will we see tonight, exactly. Raymond of Cumbria, lovely to see you there. Here we go, here we go, tippy tappy straight away, it's not going to take long, this is crazy. I wasn't sure about using the Tuuk uh, flapper because of that, but we've got tons of worm, so, and the high tide's only around, probably I'd say about 11 tonight, I'm not entirely sure. So we'll get it up and over again as we did yesterday, we'll look to fish up to midnight at least and we'll see how we go from there. Esther joins us, Nick the fish. Uh, got to join you later. Started by to hit the like button. Thank you, Nick, you legend. Thank you. Smithy Smithy is in house. Tippy tappy, ladies and gentlemen. Tippy <coughs> tappy already. As we see that right hand rod get hit by a fish. But we want the big one. We want the screaming reel tonight. Fish with Ben on the Isle of Wight joins us. I hope you're doing okay. Very good, Ben. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Stephen Baker joins us too. Steve, lovely to see you there. Thank you for joining us here this evening where we are having a go at some bass fishing. It's all we're doing. Bob by the water, lovely to see you there. It's Will by the water tonight as we do a bit of bank fishing. Come on, tippy tappy. Get the bucket of water ready to call those reels when they scream off. Yes. Simon Hannon, lovely to see you there. Yeah, well, it's encouraging that we've had a bite straight away. It's gone quiet. Hang on, left hand rod had a tap. Robbie Jin's in the house. Oh, tippy tappy on the left hand rod. Tippy tappy on. That one might be on, actually. That one might be on. We keep an eye on that. He might. Yeah, I think he's hooked himself. We've got our first little schoolie coming in. Eastern Silent Fly joins us. Oh yeah, yeah, there's something. Oh, they're both going. That's not a bad size for a first fish.
Lovely little chunk for a first fish, guys. Let's get him back in. We should pull a decent fish out. That's a good stamp for a first one. We might just have to fish one rod with two at flappers on it. Mind you, there's no fish on that one. I'm just going to bait one hook on here. See if I can sling it from here. I'm not going to get a minute to sit down here tonight, I don't think. This is going to be chaos. This is going to be chaos tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I can just, I can just see it being madness. Jay's bright, lovely to see. You. Lovely to see Robbie was joining us too. Robbie, well done on your win yesterday. Cheetah, cheetahs in the house. Lawrence is there. Slacky Jan is in the house. Lovely to see you there. And John Hatton joins us. We've had our first fish, and there comes our second, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes our second. Thanks, this for uh, Thomas Smith, Simon Hannah. We love chaos. You're going to get plenty of chaos tonight, I reckon. I think we might have a fish on straight away. We're not here for school bass, and I didn't think it was going to be like this. Fun, fun, fun. It's going to be again. I thought it might be busy, but not this crazy. Mark Miles, a nice uh, complaint to have whilst fishing. Let's, yes, yeah, quite right. I shouldn't moan, should I? I should moan. Steve Baker left you some squid for quid in PayPal. Oh, wow, really? Trini, how you doing, all right? Steve Baker, wow. Steve, I can attempt to do you a song, but I can almost guarantee we're not going to get through it because uh, <laughs> those rods are going to go. Right, hang on, two seconds. Let's, where's Veronica at least? There we go. Steve, thank you so much indeed, you absolute legend. We have had some cash left for some squid by Mr. Stephen Baker. Stephen, thank you so much indeed. <coughs> Steve, thank you so much. You can, tr you can try and do a request if you like, mate, but we're probably not going to get through it. If, if, if we do do Super Chat requests tonight, if I start singing a song but we get a bite, uh, then that will have to be the end of the song and we, we, like, we don't get back and then try and carry on with it because I'll never put the guitar down and we'll never catch any fish. 
because uh, as soon as I pick the guitar up, you guarantee the rod will go again. So, but I can attempt to see how far through a tune we can get, if you'd like. But I, I can predict some chaos here tonight. We've had a bite on that left rod, and the fish didn't come back. So I'm wondering if he sat on the snood. Oh, what's that light? Where did that come from? Oh, someone there with lights, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for all the likes, ladies and gentlemen. Loads of likes already. As I will tr attempt to play the 100 like tunes as soon as and when. Carl Gilbert, lovely to see you there. Absolutely incredible. We've had one fish already. We've had taps on the other rod. It's chaos here already, ladies and gentlemen. And we're, we're, the water's already close enough for us to cast from the bank. Philip Brown is in town. So this is this is good because I, I want to keep the cast relatively close. So I'm not going to be hammering them out tonight. I mean the water's still a bit of a way away. So from where I'm casting, it will look like I'm giving it some oomph. But my intention isn't to chuck them out far. Ace Reflections Fishing's lovely to see you there as Darren Kennedy joins us too. I watched a bit of your video today, Ace. Well done, mate. Well done getting out there and having a go. Free bit of Rocklin, very nice. Peddling Paul is in the house. Hang on, there's someone here. And a fish too, I can hear some voices. Nice looking venue, Coastal Marquee. This one's beautiful, this venue is really nice. It's absolutely fantastic. The views you get are just amazing, you know, because it's a city with a stream going through it, you know, well, with a sea river. You know, well, it's a creek, it's a creek, ladies and gentlemen. But it, as the water rises, it's the sea level coming up, you know. So it is a coastal mark, ironically, coastal marquee. But yeah, it's lovely. It's a long way inland, though. So this is the last place the water gets to. Uh, Trini, lovely to see you there. As Nigel Brown is in town. I'm very well, thank you. I had my first proper night's sleep last night, so I'm feeling pretty good. I've been, I haven't slept properly for ages, ages. Gary Scott is in the house. Lovely to see you there. I'm gonna bring in that left hand rod and have a look at the bait and rebait it, get it out there. It's had a few taps. So the bait's bound to be gone on that already. We've got loads of it. So we don't have to skimp on bait tonight. No, there's nothing on this one at the moment. The bait has gone, but that's no surprise with the amount of bites we're getting. Why is this one hasn't had a tap yet? We're going to be very active around the rods tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of potential for a good fish here tonight.
we got we got two lots of worm. One's got a lot of little bits of worm in, so I'm putting two or three up the hook. The other one's got big worm in, saving them for high tide. I hope that wasn't poop I just stepped in. Ladies and gentlemen, absolutely fantastic. We are down by the water's edge. We've had one bass first chuck. Johnny got John Goodman joins us here tonight. Full house, ladies and gentlemen, full house. Fen is in the house, lovely to see you there, Fen. We want a four pound plus bass here tonight and then I'll be happy. Oh, no, I'm not in desperate need of them, Gary, no. No, and no, I'm a long way down the park. Oh, hang on, is that a slack line? Hang on. Oh, it's up. Fish on. It's not massive, though, but it's given us a slack line. He's on the top. Beautiful, they're getting bigger, they're getting bigger. Oh, he slipped out the ends. Oh, they're so strong. This could be a nightmare when we get the big one here tonight. Oh, please stay still. I just want to hold you up and let you go. Come on. Don't play up. Oh, he's all covered in mess now. Ladies and gentlemen, they're getting bigger. He's a fat, fat baby bass, but he's the right colour. This is what we came for. Let's get him back in. Keeping us busy, we want a four pound plus bass. Well, I can feel it coming, ladies and gentlemen. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord. And I've been waiting for this moment in all my life. Four pound bass. That was a nice little slack line. That'll do lovely, ladies and gentlemen, come on. Can't believe it, we've had a slack line, we've only been here, what, half an hour? Penny D, lovely, towards bait, Johnny Shockerman. Oh, we've had a super chat as well, guys, and a, oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, guys, sorry. 100 likes as well. And Johnny John Goodman has done a super chat. You absolute legend, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny John Goodman. For Big Dave joins us here. Guys, you absolute legends. It's going to be hard to play music here tonight, guys. Hard to play music. I don't think it's a good idea. Actually, I don't usually do it because the mud actually here. Actually, yeah, I didn't bring the guitar last time because the mud. Um, if you if you don't mind, guys, if you can forgive me, we'll leave the guitar alone because we're going to miss a good fish. Otherwise, we've got some good chance here to get into a decent fish. It's going to go again. Tim, Tim and Jackie are there. Hang on, it's, there's a fish looking at it. There's a fish looking at it. He's swimming round it. It's going to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's fast and furious here tonight. There, he's tapping on it. I wonder if he's on it. I wonder if that's a little one on it already. Hang on. 
God, I wonder if there's loads of big ones out there. Veronica is fine. Penny, thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Don't slip on the bank, I know. Like I did the last time. One of my quite popular disappearing acts was filmed here, ladies and gentlemen, as I disappeared down the side of that bank. It's just keeping an eye on that rod. It seems to have settled at the mud. No, that it is knocking. He might be there. There might be something on there. Right, hang on, I think we might have a little something on there. Could be an eel. Yeah, something there. God, oh, it's going to be crazy tonight. It's bass number three, he's a tiddler. We don't really want too many of these. I don't think we've got any choice though, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't got any choice. I want to use all the little worm first and then get into them big ones. Oh, this is going to be chaos. This is going to be like a workout here. This is going to be like a workout, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have to take this hat off, although I love it. Fish is a fish. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's beautiful. It is good. But we want the big ones. We want the big ones. We've got a good chance of finding one. They're here. The bass are here. So I'm pretty sure there's been some good fish coming out on the lures and on the ground baits and we've got loads of ground bait. Ken Saffield joins us here tonight. It's lovely to see you there as you join us for the chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, the chaos that is Local Marts Fishing's live show down by the water's edge. It's always busy when we're on this mark but everyone else has been finding the big stuff few small conga flat bass showing. Hang on, hang on. Tippy tappy. Hold up, hold up. Oh, he's slack line, slack line, really. I'll say slack line, but, oh. Oh, he's come off. That might have been an eel. There was a head shake there, which felt all right. And then it came, oh no, hang on. It's... No, there's something there. Lovely little lip hooking on the size 2 O's. Let's get them in there. I think I should have gone with a 5 O here.
I'm gonna put a bigger hook on there if we don't see a bigger fish soon. This is gonna be too much <laughs> running, running around for them little fish. We don't want those little fish. We want the big ones. I'm leaving that other rod up there for purely aesthetic reasons at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, as David L joins us. How you doing, all right? Oh, it's chaos here at the moment, guys. For anyone just joining us, we are flat out already. Flat out. I'm not even setting the, the um, grippers on them lids, so I'm just chucking them in. Uh, they're, they're not on the ground long enough to worry about setting grippers here. So uh, we've got them in. There isn't. There's two rods in, but we're only really using one at the moment. Oh, there it goes again. Let's see straight away. Straight away, the line drops in a little bit. Oh, we've got to do something about that. We can't fish like this all night. We'll have to. Uh, we we'll have to get a bigger rock on there. Got to try and avoid these little ones. Felt like that one popped off then. Yeah, it's gone. Ah, oh, okay, we've had a, an eel that's spun us up. Yes, Philip! <laughs> I have no idea who that was. Oh, I want to feel some weight on that rod, ladies and gentlemen, some weight. That's what we want. Something substantial, you know what I mean? A good fish is what we're after. There's plenty of bass around, so might see one. We'll see how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. As the fish keep us on our toes here. Lots of tippy tappy. Lots of tippy tappy, ladies and gentlemen. Still got back 13 years in counting. Bad back. Oh, need weight, David. Yes, we need weight. We need a weighty fish. Yes. As the water gets deeper and deeper, the little one should thin out. Ah, oh, Rids is in the house. Rids, how are you doing? All right? Yeah, it should thin out the fish as the water rises. That's, that's what I find with this spot. Sometimes it can go really um, slow. Urban, uh, oh, we got a new subscriber. Urban, how you doing? Rids, lovely to see you there. Oh, Urban Paradise, hello from California. What country and city is that in the background? Good fishing. South coast of the UK, the, yeah, England. England, UK, south coast. Uh, lovely to see everybody here tonight rids joining us here uh, for the chaos on the rods thank you for smashing that like button ladies and gentlemen loads of likes loads of likes jj's in the house rocket man like the fields of babylon 
hoo, woo, hoo, woo, hoo. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. A do, 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 do. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Thank you, David. Thank you so much indeed. Well, we're in the right place. We've got the right bait and plenty of it. Most picturesque mark. Yeah, it's beautiful, this one. Yeah, I like this. One at this mark and the ferry were, were the best marks that we did for, you know, the best looking marks. Love to see bass fishing even with baits. Love them feisty little things. Oh, there we go. Tippy tappy. See, once one finds the bait, they don't give up on it. So that we've just had a tap, he'll be back in a second. Beautiful, the city lights. Yeah, they are, they are nice. And with the train there as well. So a fish has arrived at the bait. We will have another fish in a second. Just give him a minute to come back round. He's had a go. Unless he felt a little nip of the hook and was put off by it. But they're usually quite keen, you know, have a bite and then they're straight on it a second later. Choo-choo trains going past. Ladies and gentlemen, as we see fish having a go at the baits. How long are you out on this? night. Uh, why David, are you thinking of burgling my house? <laughs> I don't know mate, long as it takes, long as it takes. Ian Kant, how you doing? Evening mate, got the night off work so I can catch my first show in about two weeks. How's the weed there at the moment? It's all right Ian, it's stuck to the ground so it's not lifting in the water column. That was a good knock. I thought we was in then. I'm going to get some more bait on either way. That was a bit of a better pull, that one. And the fish was a looked. Might have been a big bass with a big mouth. And the hook just went in and straight out. Do you know what? I think we're probably actually going to get through that worm quite quickly, you know. At this rate. People sitting and not chatting, please help and smash the like button. Oh yeah, no, it's great. People usually hit the like button throughout the evening. It's okay, guys, it's fine. There's no rush, no rush. Mark Dodds joins us here. Lovely to see you there. We are doing very well. We're on a spot where the fishing is on fire. And so will the bank be soon when I put a lighter to it. <laughs> I'm only kidding, ladies and gentlemen. I'd never do such a thing. It's all too wet anyway. The jinx effect is there. Yeah, how you doing? Watching the recordings. Oh, wicked. Well, I'm really pleased to see you're back in. Michael Manning joins us too. Your day is long and the night. The night is just alone. When you show you've had enough of this bait, Mr. Bass, so hang on. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I manage a forest. Oh, I never thought about being a thief. Rats, oh, you should, it's profitable. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. No, I was just giving you an idea of why I don't, I'm not too specific on times and I'm vague about stuff because you just don't, you might be asking an innocent question. And then I say, yeah, I won't be home for seven hours. And then someone watching is like, oh, he's away for seven hours. Here we go, boys, load up the van. You know what I mean? So I'm always vague. I don't really answer the question of how long am I going to be out. Hang on, what's happening on that left-hand rod there? That's a strange motion. I think we might have caught a bit of seaweed there. Something's happening on that left-hand rod. I think that's seaweed going through, so I might have to check that. 
don't really want to leave it out there. I mean, you know, I'm really only fishing one rod at the moment. Uh, going to the new Ghostbusters film Saturday. Yeah, they got a new one out, and then King Kong Friday. Oh, hopefully that'll be nice. Wicked. Yeah, yeah, the new Ghostbusters. It's amazing with the CGI they've got. It's amazing. Ace Reflections. Well, it's it's true, honestly. You'd be, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised what happens. It's like when certain sports folk are playing away at a game. As soon as people see that game go live, they rob their houses. So yeah, don't, it's, you know, you've got to be careful when you're doing this thing. There's a lot of un, uh, hidden dangers that people don't consider, uh, but I'm aware of a few of them. But there's always a few you're never aware of. But right, let's um, bring that left hand rod in. Oh, head shake there. Oh, this is better. Yeah, this is better. Oh, yeah, this is better. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, he's come off. No. Oh, he shook the hook, man. Oh, I don't believe it. That was well going for it. That was a good fish. Oh, man. We better land a good fish here tonight <laughs> and not lose them all. Come on guys, keep that morale going. That was a good fish that was. They're out there. They're the ones we want that take the drag. There's a slippery bit of mud down there. I hope it's not dog mess. We just lost our first good fish. We just lost our first good fish. Perry joins us here. Some big old bass come out of creeks. Yes. Yeah, we nearly had one there. We nearly had one there, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your eyes peeled, ladies and gentlemen. Would have been nice to get a good fish out that early. It that early. Yeah, it shook the bigger ones out there. Yeah, that was a good fish. He was well going for it on the on the on the end of the rod. I could feel him hammering, head shakes. It was fantastic. 
But yeah, he shook the hook. Tricky, tricky here. This is, oh, he's having a look, hang on. See, it's, I shouldn't be using two rods, really. I'm going to put that red one away in a minute. Because if we get a good fish on the other rod and I'm fight like, got one on the left-hand rod, the right-hand rod goes. That's what happened when we were here before and we lost a good fish because trying to battle a tiny thing on one rod and the other rod went. J.A. McCookie, hi, all from Winchester. How you doing? The lovely Winchester. Fantastic place. Love Winchester. It's just such a lovely place. The big old cathedral and the, the history is incredible. Thank you for joining us here. Having a look, James, having a look. Some more tippy tappy we want. Can't believe that fish got off, man. That is crazy. I mean, the hooks are good. You've been fishing for years and it seems you're using too much. Go for one catch, mate. Yeah, fair enough. Jay Sparky, tippy tappy, thank you. There are three sides of fish, small, medium, and the one that got away. Exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, Penny D, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put a rod down, but I've, I've just put them out. So I want to see if the bait goes at least before I bring it in. But no, I will be putting a rod down. I can see that two rods is too much. So yeah, I'm going to put one down in a bit. Left hand rod gets a tap again. There might be a little fish sat on that actually. Let's bring it in and have a look. So we'll put one in guys until a bit later. If it gets a bit quiet, we'll stick the other one in. But you can see two rods is too much. Well, I mean, unless you want to run up and down to the rods constantly, then it's not enough. You can have four rods out there. Oh, beautiful, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful. It's nice and busy, which is good. Ken, lovely, jubbly, great white. Oh, wow, great white, you legend. Ken, Will got his bait elastic. Yeah, I did, I've put pictures up of it on YouTube as well. Great white racing and fishing, wow. A Dream Team Appreciation Donation, mate, you absolute legend. How about that? Thank you so much indeed. We're not playing the guitar at the moment, Great White, purely because of how crazy the bite is at the moment. It's absolute chaos. If it slows down, we will do later. So anyone that's done a super chat will have a go later on if it dies off. Now we've got one rod in it, we might be all right. But ladies and gentlemen, great white race of fishing with a, an amazing, amazing 
appreciation donation for the moderators. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for the support, guys. It's absolutely incredible, honestly. Well done, Will. Gel, uh, got elastic, mate. Yes, yeah, got elastic, yes. We got elastic, thank you, guys. Uh, be day Sky, Quake Warrior, be day 53. Yeah, we, what, we want the bike to just slow down a little bit. Remind me, I got the money, Ken. If you got the money, honey, we got your disease in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. Waiting for another. Oh, there we go. There we go. A little pull there. Oh, is he going to take it? He's come back yet. You just don't know how far it's going to go, you know. Gets all excited, I do. No, he's not there, but we'll bring it in and rebate it. Once we've had a bite, you know, we might as well assume the bait's gone. And like I say, we've got plenty of bait. Yeah, the bait's gone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, absolutely fantastic. Is the bag hanging from the rod a counterweight? No, no, it's it's my sling bag and I've just got it under there drying out in the wind. So it, it's wet. So it's just drying off. The, we usually have a counterweight, but not today. Perfectly understandable, thank you. Don't neglect the fishing on my account. Just wanted to thank the wonderful mod team and show support for the channel. Incredible, guys. Thank you. Is all the gear and no idea here? Did I see that somewhere? No. Well done, lovely jubbly ladies and gentlemen. That are well done. Uh, be Dave. Sky oh, Skyquake Warriors in, is she? Oh no, Skywalker. Oh, Skywalker, how you doing? All right, lovely to see you there. Thank you for joining us here, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, pardon me, boy, is the Chadden of the Choo Choo. Is that the Chadden of the Choo Choo? Hmm. South Coast Drones, how are you doing all right? Lovely to see you joining us here tonight. As the cloud breaks up a little bit, which I'm glad to see, because I was getting a little bit worried about rain perhaps arriving. The cloud has broken up, which is absolutely fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow, I've managed to sit down for a couple of minutes, which is absolutely fantastic. Oh, I don't know, here we go. Tippy tappy. Will too young for that one. Oh, here we go. He's tapping away. Hang on. I spoke too soon, ladies and gentlemen. I spoke too soon. Not on there, but I'll check the bait. Oh yeah, I baited the top hook this time. I remember. To get it into the water column. Just to see if it made a difference. We've had all the fish tonight on the bottom hook. 
So I baited the top one to hold it off the floor, see if it makes a difference. Because a lot of bass are hit on lures off the surface or free lining. So I thought if we stick one in, in the middle of the column, we'll see what happens. That looked like a bite. <laughs> that looked like a bite, but I'm not sure. It's a bite. Man, the whole water column must be full of fish. Yeah, they're hitting it, I can feel it. Go back with the bottom up. Oh, well, big thanks to Sam and the Solar Warrior for the donation of bait that we're using here today as well. So Sam dropped off a tenner's worth of worm yesterday. That's what I'm using here at the moment. And then we had a little bit actually dropped off by Glen Pellet as well. So I topped it up with that. And then um, the Solar Warrior gave me a, a, roughly a pound of worm today. So we've got a fair bit, ladies and gentlemen. Ollie goes fishing the legend. Fabulous evening all. How are we? We are absolutely amazing as Jackie is there. Yeah, the surface lures, they do they do pretty well on the bass here for surface lures. Steve Davis, lovely to see you there. Lovely to see you join us here. That water's really pushing in now. I can see it really. We're getting a bit of a flow going on here. As, as the water comes up, the fishing should slow up. Right, hang on, there's something having a look, ladies and gentlemen. Skywalker, lovely to see you there. He's a top lad. Thank you so much. We're having a blast, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, is the Solar Warrior here? Oh, is that just a thank you for the worm? Scott Riley's in the house. Love that spot. A lot of good memories there. South Coast drones. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. It really is. Yeah. First live worm ordered for the weekend, Dolly. Nice. Nice. What are you going for? There's a lot of place about at the moment. People seem to be targeting the place. The bass are holding in the sort of creeks and the and the nursery areas at the moment. Creeks and rivers and harbours. Oh, lots of memories. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, the fireworks. Yeah, the fireworks. That was awesome, wasn't it, eh? Absolutely epic. Yeah, we've done a few, well, a couple of shows here. Actually, yeah, a couple of fireworks shows. Absolutely fantastic. It's still cod. Right, okay, awesome. Nice. Since last year, Eva, Steve. Ironics oh, one, how you doing? May as well go for the place tomorrow, Will, if you have the worm. No, we'll run out of worm here tonight, at the way it's biting at the moment. We'll, we'll, we'll hammer that worm. 
we are getting through it already. I thought we had loads, but I'm looking at it sort of going down as we, because some of them are quite small, so I'm having to load them up on the hook. But the bike should slow up as that tide comes in, you know, and there's more water for the little fish to disperse around. It's Curbside Classics joins us here tonight. How do you do? Lovely to see you here as you join us tonight, having a go at the bass, ladies and gentlemen. I get out every chance, it's deflating, not having anything in that long, yes. What rig for place, wishbone, best get tie and a flap and pulley I've made. People do use the wishbone rigs for the place, yes. Yeah, but I mean a one up, one down, I think for a place it's more about the sort of colour of beads that you use. Hang on, hang on, hang on, what's that? Oh, that was a slight different bite there, that was a slow sort of pull down bite there. Like a floundery bite or something going on. Or a congery, not congery, an eel. It's all right, it might just be a bit of seaweed going through. Managed to sit down for a couple of minutes now without the rod going. You got new elastic for the swing, Gerald, yes. Crab David. Uh, would love to see you get that big bass out here. It would be amazing. Oh, what rig am I using here tonight? I'm using a one up, one down. Uh, place the bottom feeders, yes. Yep, yeah, place the bottom feeders. Oh, tippy tappy, ladies and gentlemen, tippy tappy. How many have been caught? Been away for half an hour. Oh, 500, Darren, 500. No, we've had a few. I've lost count already. Black and green are all the raids for place, yes. Another little bite on there, but I've put big worms on there at the moment, so I think there'll still be a bit of worm on there. One up, one down is the same as a two up hook flapper. No, no, it's not. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's a good bite. Who don't look like he's there. Nah. Oh, well, come on. Hopefully the bigger ones will move in as the tide comes up. The, the, the bite will go a bit quieter, but there'll be better fish around. Yeah, on a on a uh, one up, one down. Or on a two hook flapper, both of the snoods with the hooks on are within the length of the rig body. So they lay it's two hook flapper. They flap al along the length of the rig body and don't go down below the weight at the bottom of the rig body. So you got your swivel at the top, weight at the bottom, and two hook flapper, two snoods within that length. A one up, one down is you've got one snood that basically goes down to roughly where the weight is and then one that goes down below the weight. So one's the length of the rig body and one go extends beyond the rig body and down past the weight. So yeah, they're two different rigs. But you, it, if you use a like I think it's called a Gemini clip at the top and a Gemini clip at the bottom you you can just turn a um, turret flapper upside down and make it a one up one down 
depending on how you make it. There are ways of doing it. I actually demonstrated them the other day. Do I mainly use them for bass? No. No, I'd be using pulley rigs there for bass. But I just, I want to save my pulley rigs for the beaches. So I've just gone with a two hook. I find uh, when, when the bite slows down a bit here, which it might do, we haven't fished it for ages. Sometimes it's better to have a two hook because it increases your chances. That's the only reason it's there. Hang on, here we go. The left end rod's got a single hook on, a pulley rig. But that's what I'd usually be using, a pulley rig. A lot of people use the running leisures here though. I mean, there's so many different methods. Also, uh, lure fishing, I mean, or float fishing's a good one here. Y you could use any method that you prefer and it'll work. This place is full of it, full of them. I mean, you could you get bass here on every possible method, especially at this time of year. It's great practice for youngsters as well, because there's a lot of little fish about as well. But there are big ones in there. Usually on the float or the lures will help to find them. But we've had them on worm and we've had two, I mean, I've had a fish on that's got off here tonight that felt like a good fish and we've had a couple of really good bites. So at the way it's fishing, we should see a good fish here tonight. I'd like one four pound plus. I'll be happy with that. But if we get one, two pounds, I guess I don't want to aim too high. But I think it's not within the realms of possibility that we'll get a four pounder out of here. We'll, one of them rods should go and the reel will scream off up the creek and we'll, have, we'll be fighting something. I mean, there's every chance of that. Here we go, something's just turned up again and had a little nibble. He should come back, he should come back. He only had a little taster, here he comes. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, he's having a little sniffer, he's sniffing at it. Here he goes, he's having a little wobble, well, just a tiny little thing that is. M&T, living and cooking is in the house. Lovely to see you joining us here for what is turning out to be a very, very busy session indeed. Some heavy fish in the creeks, 100%, yes. Michael Davidson, thank you so much. We've got a beautiful session here tonight. It's the Hound Dog Hunter joins us too. Uh, the Solar Warrior caught a beautiful fish today. You want to watch out for his next video. A really special fish, once in a lifetime, Jobby. He did the same thing when he went out last time as well. But yeah, he's actually pulled it out of the bag again. And so he's caught a, another PB fish. I don't know if he's told anyone yet. I'm not going to say what it is. But he went out the other day and caught a PB fish. And I just can't believe it. Jay Sparky, the hound dog, Michael Davidson in the house as we see Tippy Tappy and endeavour to get a big fish here. The bite does appear to be slowing down just a little bit at the moment. This is good. We want it just to settle a bit. The big fish move through the deeper waters faster, which is good. The little ones sort of thin out a bit, but the big ones can still move through that water column quite quickly, cover a lot of ground and find your bait. So if it slows down, we're not too worried. It shouldn't take long for a big one to scan out our baits. We'll see how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, little tiny, lots of little tiny rattles still though. Little tiny rattle there again. Might just get up there and have an, oh, that's a better one. That's a better one. Hang on. Yeah, I think he might be on. Tiny little fish, this one. If he's not on, we'll just move it away from him anyway. Rebate it, get it back out. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm only joking. We were snagged. Oh, hang on. We, oh, actually, we might have lifted up some seaweed. How mad is that? 
he's not even hooked. The, the, the line is in his mouth, caught in his teeth. Oh, he's let go. There you go, that was a mad one. The line was caught round, wrapped round his mouth and his gills. It's getting back in. Please. You should have Come on, I want a decent fish. There's definitely one out there for us tonight. Come on. We want one that's going to take that drag. That's really what we want. That's what I want. Very gorgeous fish. 100 likes tonight. Ah, oh, see? <laughs> yeah, no point in trying to play that. Right, is he on? Is he still wobbling? I don't know, he might have dropped it. He might have dropped it, the cheeky. Cheeky little fish here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like playing it a big bass. Are you likely to have a nice sized fish of this mark? Yes, highly likely. Yeah. That's what we're here for. I want a four pound fish at least. Well, I mean, you know, four pounds is not a bad fish. We want a bass that just looks nice. I mean, they all look good. They're all just proportionately smaller, better, you know, looking versions of the big ones if you like but i'd like a big one that's what we're here for we got loads of worm the tide is perfect the time is for the tide is spot on so we're right here at the perfect time when we could see a good fish and it fishes up and over as well i bet it won't look as nice as my pint of guinness but possibly not no it just depends what you're into, doesn't it? <laughs> depends what you're into. I quite like the look of a fish. <laughs> yeah, liver damage doesn't appeal to me. m and living and cooking absolutely. Oh, there we go. Nice little tap there again. Right, let's check that bait either way. Snagged again. Oh, it's a big one as well. That might have been an eel. Right, we've lost that. Oh, we got it back. Oh, something snapped out there. We might have caught an old rig and it's just broken. Oh, it's straight and the hook.
Right, let's get it back in there, ladies and gentlemen. We've lost our bottom up. Oh, hang on, I think I've got a pack of hooks in there, actually. I've got a packet of hooks in here, if I remember right, if they're still here. Let's have a look, ladies and gentlemen, if we can get to them before that rod kicks off again. Yeah, I had my, oh, mind you, if I remember right, they're actually, yeah, quite big. Yeah, they're no good for here. No, nah, they're like O'Shaughnessy hooks. Let's have a look at what else we got here, though. What's that? That's a pearl. They're, they're quite decent. I might cut a hook off there and get it on there. Just increase the size of the hooks a bit. Scooby dooby 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 Scooby dooby dooby Scooby doo. Right, so yeah, if I cut that off of there, they're quite good looks. Slightly bigger, I think those are three O's there. Next time I bring that one in, I'll rehook it. Got a head shake on here. Believe there's a fish on. Unless there's a smart bit of seaweed shaking his head. Oh, it's gone light. Oh, it's come up. Oh, it's a crab. We just dropped a crab.
Right, we've got some better size hooks on there. They are stronger now as well though, so if we get hooked up, we might lose them. Anything is possible. David Winch, how you doing all right? Yeah, we're doing all right, busy session. I'm, I'm fuming though, because we've lost a good fish already. We've lost a good fish, it's frustrating, man. Different rigs we use all the time, lose fish. I mean, he was, he was hooked as well. He just was shaking his head so violently, he came off. But we'll, uh, should get into another one. Might just have to use the port loo quickly, ladies and gentlemen, if I get time. Bear with me to try and see how it goes. Hello, Steve. Hey, hey, hey. love you, There's a big bait on that one, a big worm. It might tap away while I'm baiting up down here, but don't worry, the fish that we want, I'll hear the drag going, if it's worth really hitting. That was well shallow there, I'm not going to bother with that. I was expecting it to be a bit deeper there. That's better. We're going to try one at distance and one in close. One at distance, one in close. See if I get time to tuck into a port by, ladies and gentlemen. It's high tension here, ladies and gentlemen. We could get into something half decent. We've lost one. We've got to try and pull it back. It's frustrating. This old fishing malarkey. 200 ladies and gentlemen, top fishing blokes. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. We've made 200 likes. <coughs> Thank you guys. Have you ever met the royal family? Why would you ask that, Urban Paradise? What makes you ask that? What would make you think that? I just want to understand your thought process behind that question. Because if, if we got someone in that's just going to ask ridiculous questions all night, I haven't got time for that.
Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> We are English, that's an old one. Because you're a Lord, ah, ah, us crazy Americans. Michael, me and Dean, deaf, both the same, because you is a Lord. Uh, uh, right, I'm not an actual Lord. <laughs> right, sorry, right, I'm with you. So he can see you lot calling me Lord. No, I'm not an actual Lord. No, I haven't been knighted by the royal family, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I'm, I came across well arrogant there. Right, I can, under, I can totally understand the question now. Sorry. What rigs have you got on them? So I've got a, a one up, one down, but I'm only using one. Holy moly, whoa, yeah. on yeah he's on he's swimming round the water column oh head shakes head shakes that's a bit better Right, let's get this on. What a bite that was, guys, eh? And he's not actually massive. But what a bite, eh? They're the ones we're after. Oh, hang on. Oh, he's strong. He's not massive, but so strong. So better it's, oh, it's too strong. Now he's all dirty. Oh, it's hard trying to keep him clean here. Oh, he's covered in dirt now. Spoiled. There he is. Let's get him back in. What a lovely bite. Imagine what a one three times the size is going to go like. Yeah, what a beautiful bit of drag as well. Lovely, healthy bass. He's only a little pound and a half. It's getting back in. Can't wait for the big takedown. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that was on the bigger hook as well. Oh, that was the one in close as well. That was on the rod in close. I tried to flick it out, but it was in too shallow. Get bigger, Will, the beast is coming. There they are, they're getting progressively bigger, ladies and gentlemen, as we see a better fish. Just hit the baits there, ladies and gentlemen. That was beautiful. Ian Rosia, Rose Sitter joins us. How do you do? Lovely to see you there. Thank you for joining us here this evening. Absolutely fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go then. That was a beautiful bite. 
Beautiful bite, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just keep our fingers crossed for a massive one. Be surprised how close bass sit. I had a 54 centimetre seven foot from the shore hiding in the weeds. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm going to try and keep a rod in close and one at distance to see how we do. Where's that other? Hang on. Yes, this is the place I slipped in the water. We like you always hear BS about everything. It's nice to talk to other people. Nice fish, and I'm excited to know you. Urban Paradise, thank you. I do apologise earlier on. Sometimes we get people turn up like they call them trolls and they'll just ask loads of really silly questions. But that went straight over my head because I'm just a normal bloke, just like you. So, no, I've never met the royal family. The lordship comes from, um, I mean, I was, I mean, I did, it, it was an official bit of paperwork that I got saying that I got a bit of land. Hang on, hang on, hang on. But I don't identify as a lord, really. <laughs> Other people identify me as a lord since the paperwork, but. But no, I've never met the royal family. They wouldn't want nothing to do with me. Yeah, that was a beautiful takedown, that, Jackie, eh? Oh, hang on, hang on. Another tap on the right as well. We've got the right size hooks on now, I reckon. I've gone up to a 3 -o on both of them. They were only they were 2 O's. We've only got one size up. But it might help us avoid all the little ones. We could see a nice eel here, European eel. Keith Lock joins us. Lovely to see you there. As we get, uh, oh, hang on, is that a slack line? Must have picked up and swam in. There must be loads of good fish swimming around here. We've put a lot of hours into this mark over the past year. It's about time we saw a good fish. I'm surprised this one ain't gone. I put a big old bait on here.
Nice little chuck just in the edge for that one. Nice little chuck in the edge. Lynette joins us. Absolutely fantastic. Dean Penn's a good fisher person. Dean Penn's a good fisher person. Always shows the angers up when she comes out. Be out on the sip before you know it. Definitely where there's small bass, big ones aren't far off. Uh, they like me neither. Thank you, legend fisherman. They like me neither. Yes, urban paradise, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so have a quick swig of drink before one of them rods rips off again, hopefully. Oh, tippy tappy on the right hand rod again. Stephen Cottish joins us here tonight. Oh, it's all nice little knock there. Hang on, is he going to come back round and pick it up, ladies and gentlemen? Slightly bigger hook on there now, so it could be that it's a little fish trying to have a go, but he can't quite get it. This is why we've gone with a slightly bigger bait. We're almost through that first lot of worm already, you know. In two hours, I think we'll probably be at the end of all that. Useless angler, lovely to see you there. Loads of tippy tappy, mate. It's crazy. It's crazy. Loads of it. The rods are going nuts. They have. That, they've slowed down a little bit past half hour as that water rises. Let me take turn the light off on this phone, actually, just in case that puts them off coming in close. But yes, uh, hopefully the bigger stuff's out there now. So I've got the two rods back in. Because I think we've got a better chance of a better fish now. As we see that right hand rod just get another tiny little knock there. Keeping our eyes on it. It's a nice tippy tappy. The thing about bass, even the small ones have big mouths and eyes bigger than their bellies. Yes. Yeah, the mullet. Yeah, I saw someone caught a nice mullet yesterday or today. Somewhere on a social media thing somewhere. It might have been um, Instagram. Get a pulley rig on it. We've got a pulley rig on it, ladies and gentlemen. That left hand rod is a pulley rig. The right hand rod is a one up, one down. The, f the, the rig that has caught us the fish is the one up, one down. Uh, Dean, I feel really sorry for the dear lady. Oh no. The only thing we need to do is put a hook in the water with bait on it at the moment. I think they'll lit anything. Doesn't matter what we're using. <laughs> Polly's all you ever use for bass fishing. Yeah, well, I've caught them on one up, one downs here. Yeah. Like I say, we only need to bait a hook and chuck it in there and we'll catch. I don't think it matters what we're using. Love to see you do a mini species fish. Yeah, they'll hit anything with a bait on it at the moment. There's millions of them out there. But it depends where you're fishing. If I was fishing the beach for bass, I'd be, yeah, using pulley rigs. But in a creek that's full of fish like this, they'll let anything. We don't have to be too specific. Uh, Alan, how are you? Lovely to see you there. You're heading out yourself shortly. Nice. Popping out to have a go, eh? They seem pretty hungry tonight, to be fair. Yes. Oh, yeah, they're eating everything. Yeah, we could catch them on anything here at the moment, I think. I mean, we'd miss a few on any rig, but we'd land a few on the same rigs as well, I think. It's just there's so many fish there, different sizes. We're bound to get a few and miss a few. But we've landed about eight fish. So, I mean, we're not doing too bad. That's got to be about eight fish now, I think. I've lost count. So yeah, there's, there's plenty of action out there. Funnily enough, they all seem to be over to the right hand side. Because that left hand rod hasn't really gone. Funnily enough, the pulley rig. The one that's going is the one up, one down. Oh, that was a nice little rattle there again. Nice little rattle there. Is it going to come back in? Come on. It's a great sign for the lure fishing. Pulley with a pop-up on it but yes you will catch on anything only say pulley to counter the losses yeah well we've got a pulley on and it's not making any difference big bite incoming JJ the creek used to be brilliant for flounder yes 
Yeah, I've heard the stories from the older folk about how good it used to be here. It's a shame. I mean, you still get the flounder through here. Uh, Peter, how you doing? All right, Peter Stockton joins us. There's a guy called George, and he's fished it quite well for flounder, you know. But the trouble at the, I mean, in the winter, that is, at the moment, you're not going to get through the bass. And, and on some nights, when you do get through the bass, you're into the European eels. So if you can get through all that lot, you you might get into a a flatty top fishing. Likewise, Ace, yo, oh, it's busy here tonight. It's beautiful. It is really fishing fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely fantastic this evening as we see those rods tippy tapping away. I'm going to check that right hand rod again and the bait, ladies and gentlemen. The bass cleared the flounder out, or is that a myth? Well, the, the way I view that is bass have always been around, flounder have always been around. So, um... Oh, there's another nice bite. So the bass have always been doing what they've been doing to the flounder. So I, I don't think that recently they've been doing any more to the flounder than they've been doing for the past million years. But people do blame the bass for the flounder. Get a rebate on here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I mean, if the bass are to blame for the flounder, the only thing that's changed in their evolution is the growth of the human industry. So if the bass are killing off the flounder, it's because humans have, have allowed the bass to either grow too many in number whilst persecuting the flounder, or the other way round. Because the bass and the flounder have been in the water together for millions of years with no problem. It's only modern day that we're seeing a decline in the numbers. And that's got to be down to something the people are doing. That's just my view. It may be well wrong, but it makes sense. It's like orangutans, ladies and gentlemen. There was loads of orangutans about until we started cutting the trees down. And now there's no orangutans about. There used to be loads of elephants. Not many of them about anymore. There used to be loads of white rhinos. One, one of them went extinct. Used to be loads of dodos. There used to be loads of flounder. But we blame the bass for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's still a worm on that. Absolutely magic. Scooby-dooby-doo. Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful evening here. 
tonight down by the water's edge. We're having a little go at the bass fishing. We've got shed loads, shed loads of worm. We've got another load left further for flounders. I've had loads in Newcastle uh, not so long ago. Yeah, there's, there's millions of flounders about. There, there's no shortage. It's just that they're, they're, they're wising up to being caught. That's the thing. I mean, to be honest, right in front of us here, if I had my sib and we had a headlight on and we was going along the edge of this water here, we'd probably see flatties everywhere. But the bass ain't giving them a chance to get on the hook. So people feel that the flounder are not many about. Same in Ports of Harbour when we were just looking down. I mean, there's flounder everywhere. I mean, I've seen it with my own eyes and you've seen it. They're, they're everywhere. But you try and get through to them, through the bass, you just, and the eels. And the crabs, the, fla the flounder are everywhere. They're a species of least concern on the IFCN, I think that's the name of them, uh, the list. So, so there, there's millions of flounders everywhere. You just can't get through the other fish to catch them, unless you hit the River Aider or something like that. Locally here, sorry. Sam, how you doing? Sam, lovely to see you there. Lovely to see you there. So is that, um, I think that's the Sam that donated the worm. So Sam, thank you. The worm's doing absolutely fantastic. So Sam donated a load of worm and the Solar Warrior donated a load of worm. And, oh, hang on, tap then. Uh, Glenn donated a little bit as well. Ados C2, no will, that spot on. Best conservation areas, irrespective of ecosystem, i.e. flounders. But I guess bass is more profitable, yes. Yep. Oh, hang on. Is that a slack line? It's dropped off a bit, hang on. Let's just wind down on that a second. Just check the bait. I felt a knock. I think something was playing with it. Someone asked about the smooth bounds. Yeah, they're, they're catching smooth bounds. Yeah. They're not hearing any number, but they're about. You definitely got a chance to one. Been quite a few caught locally actually off the beaches. Yeah, they're getting loads on loads on the boats as well. Eels would have more of an impact on the flounders than the bass. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Something's in Guernsey with the sole. We can't get through the bream, but the divers are still seeing the sole, John, yes. Yeah, the flatty are just such a slow moving fish. You know, trying to get through anything to get to them is difficult. Unless you're fishing in an area where they're filtering through really, like, like the River Ada, people go there because they're all moving through one spot. Why does that line keep dropping off? I think it's because of the tide. See, Sweet Corn Kid had a smut pup off Hailing. Yes, he did. Yep, he had a smooth out. Yeah, there was one caught on the Hasler Wall the other day. They're, they're, they're out there. Yeah, they're out there. I might have to start setting the leads here again. That's dropped right in. Uh. Setting the grippers, I mean. Uh, it feels pretty sturdy there.
Let's get one out at distance. See how that bike's dropped off now, the high tide, now the tide's coming up. So there'll be less of the small fish about, but hopefully some decent big ones. All the little ones will have pushed up now. The ground is soaked through here. I can hear it squelching under my feet as I walk around. Pump up the bass. Let's get those rods pumping. Yeah, money for nothing, that was. Money for nothing and your chicks for free. We got to install microwave ovens. Oh, custom kitchens delivery. We got to move these refrigerators. We got to move these color TVs. Hang on, that left hand rod. I see you with that nice PB conga the other week, Will, and the other day with a visit from Fish Locker and the recognition. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've hit that bug. Oh, Michael Davidson, thank you. Hang on, is that Michael? Thank you from the graft you put in. Ados T2, thank you so much. Swifty joins us here. Lovely to see you there. We've had a super chat. Hang on, is that a fish on? Michael Davidson, I think it is. Right, hang on. just been hitting it trying to get on a little one so let's get the bait back in Michael thank you bear with us it's chaos yeah with the, the channel's been growing so well guys thank you thank you to you guys I mean we've had some major recognition like say that PB Conga we had winning the award and then getting to meet John Locker the other day you know I mean every day is just fantastic then we have these lovely busy days on the rods. But no, thank you guys. You know, if you weren't watching, it wouldn't be what it what it is. So without you, it wouldn't be what it is. Thank you. Let's get that bait back in. Yeah, it's awesome. It really is. Oh, what happened there? Oh, I nearly hit that button there. Michael Davidson, you absolute legend. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Michael Davidson with an amazing, amazing super chat. Thank you so much indeed. <coughs> I 
absolutely beautiful. We're just leaving the guitar alone tonight because of all the mud. So because this is a creek setting, there's mud everywhere and it gets the brand new strings on there as well. But trying to do any sort of proper lengthy song is going to, we're going to get bites before we've had a chance to finish it. So, the, But thank you so much for the support, guys. Amazing. Uh, Steve, since John Locker came in, I've started watching his stuff too, especially as he's down my way in Cornwall. Great tips. Oh, yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing. Daniel Rand, thank you. We're, we're all here because of you. Oh, you provide us with the greatest channel on YouTube. Jay, thank you, man. Thank you. But yeah, it's only great because you guys really appreciate it and enjoy it, you know. Like I say, if I had no subscribers, it wouldn't be great. But it's only because there's 8,000 people here that, nearly that love the channel, you know. And that's what makes it what it is. You know, it's all of us working together, really, I guess. It's just a massive jolly, really, <laughs> for all of us. It's a massive jolly. We all just love it, ladies and gentlemen. We get out there and we get them rods in and we all get to enjoy the fish that we catch potentially. We've had all this worm donated recently, but as soon as that worm runs out, we'll be having a go for a, a big fish. The, the temperatures are dropping soon as well. That'll help us out because a lot, a lot of people that would usually go out will stay in and watch me freezing on the beach doing it instead. <laughs> But yeah, so we'll be getting out, having a go at some of the big stuff again soon. You'd never heard of him before the other night, so thank you to Will and the LMF channel. I've seen le the legend. Yeah, yeah. It's, I often say, you know, if you haven't heard of John, do check him out. I always feel silly saying that because he's massive. You know, he's massive. He is one of the, the greatest YouTube fishermen in the world. You know, I know he... he uh, He's a very humble gentleman as well. And when I said that the other night, <laughs> he, there was a very humble reaction from him as well. But he is, he, he, I mean, he, he just is one of the one of the greatest YouTube fishermen on the planet. Dreaded Angler, how you doing all right? It's going really well, very busy. Very busy. Very, very busy on the bike. Yeah, and, I, and like I say, I, mean, I don't just say that because he's massive and it's all that. You know, I, I just truly appreciate what he does and the effort he puts in. Because I know how hard it is. Well, I mean, I say I know how hard it is. I don't know how hard it is to have 250,000 people on your channel doing it. But it, it's, it's difficult, you know, with almost 8,000. You know, putting the, putting the work in. Uh, Harvey Panel, how you doing, mate? Good guess. But we don't give away the location for my safety, so I'd ask that you please don't do that again. So I'll be straight down the line with you. But, holy moly! Oh! Because it could put me in danger because I'm in the middle of nowhere on my own. So if you know where we are, just don't give the location away, mate. That was a good bite there, but he's come off. Yeah, we give people a couple of chances with that, and if they keep giving the location away, they get blocked. So you asked the question and then you answered it. So you knew where we were, which makes me think you just wanted to give it away. Couldn't help yourself. So that was the pulley rig, and it missed the fish. Yeah, some locations I fish, I know it's obvious where I am, 
I sort of count on, on the trust of the people not to sort of give it away, you know? There are some places where I don't, I don't want to hide the mark where I am. I'd rather just trust that the people watching aren't going to put me in danger by just giving it away, you know? I mean, it's obvious where I am, I mean, you know, but it's not obvious to people that don't live locally. So I always just ask, if you know where I am, just, just try not to give it away. Because there could be 20 people watching here that don't like me and want to come down here and, with bricks, you know what I mean? You just don't know. It's like I say, it's dangerous doing this. And now he's given my location away. You know, anyone could pull any sort of prank, hide in a bush, run down here with their mates from the pub and do something they think's funny, which ain't that funny, you know what I mean? I've had it before. So I just count on the trust of the people that they're just not gonna give it away, you know what I mean? So it might be an innocent thing, but you know, I think I need to put it in a in a like bold writing somewhere, so it's a bit more obvious. I'll have to try and work it out. Painter Tackle Bait is in the house. I taught John everything I know about fishing. It was a short conversation. Evening all. Lovely to see you there, mate. How you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm going to rock up one day. I was fishing Lee one night when Will was live. I will come to say hello. Yeah, mate. Yeah, cool, man. Roy Wesley, you're legend. That was a nasty pull. I'm written rule. Don't put location name in the chat. You can pin it to chat. Yeah. Oh, can you? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to do that at some point then. Pin a message to the top. Roy Wesley, your legend. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Roy Wesley, the absolute legend. With an amazing super chat. Thank you so much indeed, Roy. <laughs> amazing support here tonight, guys. Amazing support. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you, guys, your legends. Thank you, Roy. We're not doing the guitar at the moment. I'm trying not to pick it up as much as I can because my hands are covered in mud from these bad, like mud and dirt all over your hands and that, you know, and it gets all over the guitar. And I've just repaired the guitar and put new strings on it. You know where I am to the string? <laughs> Loving the thumbnail. Yeah, we took that photo at McDonald's. There was a fox, a oh, hang on. There was a fox asleep in the grass. Hold up, that's at a pool there. It's all right, there's a bit of wind as well. Yeah, there's a fox that's leaving the grass. So I actually took that photo myself while we were live with you guys one day. I was like, look at that fox in the grass. And then I took the photo of it. Roy, thank you so much indeed, mate. You are an absolute legend. Thank you so much. The rods have been so busy. We haven't had time, mate, to stop. Here we go, here we go again. He's tapping again. He's tapping again. It's gonna go again, ladies and gentlemen. We just had a lovely big pull down. It's frustrating, isn't it? Frustrating, Bren. Muddy waters. Muddy waters, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Muddy waters. Absolutely fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Left ones in. No, right one's in. <laughs> right one's in. Potentially.
beautiful. Nice little tap there, ladies and gentlemen. Nice little tap. Absolute quality. Brilliant picture. Make a nice calendar. Yes. Yeah, it is nice. Peter Bowen joins us here tonight. Lovely to see you there. Philbert came along when you were packing up last night. Oh, did he? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a fox at that location. But I... Hang on, what was that? I didn't see him last night either, so it must have been while I was... Yeah, walking along. Putting everything in the motor, probably. Come and have a quick peeky look. Coming back with the bait on. Something went wrong there. Ah. It's caught round the edge of the broad. I think we got a good distance on it still. Beautiful. Oh, we had another good pull there, you know. We got a good chance of a decent fish. We're getting some good pull downs here. That last hit on that left hand rod, that was all right. Fuming. Well, not fuming really. We've landed a you know, pound and a half, that'll do. It's gonna have to do us for the moment. We could see a nice one. Pixie Bash is in the house. Seven hours on Slapton Beach in Devon. First time I've blanked. Yeah, the beaches are, go are hard going at the minute, you know. For some folk, anyway. Locally, for us. You know, I had a blank, two blanks the other day. And then we only just pulled it out of the bag yesterday. I've got new ideas for nailing those congas, though. So the next time we're on a local beach, I'll be using a different type of rig. I'm going to make one up and, and try it and see what happens. So I can see what the congas are doing to our rigs. So I'm going to try and use a method which I'll explain on the day when we cast one out. I've got to make the rig up first. But we'll see how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. See how it goes. On our toes, on our toes. Well, we shall see how it goes. Lots of tippy tappy here tonight. The rods have been going absolutely berserk. Hey Pixie, where you were you in the shop today? Paint and tackle and bait, the legend is here. Will is there LMF merchandise available? Yes. There is. On a site called Teespring J. Jay. Jay, you're in the States, aren't you? Are you in the States? Because my my merchandise shop is in America, so so for the UK residents it's not a great thing because there's sh all sorts of shipping, like ridiculous shipping costs. But in the states, you don't have to pay as much shipping. Think about doing a calendar, please, Will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jay, what's happened, to Jay? What have I? Jay Sparky. Oh, is that the link? Oh, Jan's put the link to the LMF merch up. There you go. 
You're in the US. That's it, Jay, yeah. Oh, well, it will suit you perfectly. Funnily enough, the buffering in Virginia glasses have been doing really well. I think almost everyone in Virginia must have one of them by now. <laughs> They've been flying off the shelves. The buffering in Virginia! Right, let's bring that right hand rod in again, rebait it. We, we we don't have to be shy with the bait, and now the bite's slowed down. We want to get big worm baits out there. A John Batman shirt. How about a John Batman shirt? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> a John Batman shirt, yeah. Who knows? Eh? Who knows what the future brings? I, I have got to create some new merch with my QR code on. Yeah, the reason the shops in America is because the site that makes it is quality. I can't find that quality in the UK. Uh, and the, the pricing's different for each individual logo. In the UK, they charge individually, but in the States, it's all in one. So it's cheaper. A lot cheaper. Right, now the bite has slowed up a little bit. I've, I've baited up both hooks. Yeah, the LMF merchandise, I'm wearing some of the merchandise tonight, actually. I've actually got the fish locker's hat here as well, which I had on earlier, but it got a bit warm. So that, that hat, John's hat, the fish locker's hats, the quality of them is brilliant. Like, it, it's proper cosy. Uh, can you pop across on a sim and bring us some back? <laughs> what, some merchandise? Yeah, that'd be nice. <coughs> I was watching that Saving Lives at Sea the other day, a little clip of it. Not the actual programme, I watched a clip of it and there was a bloke on, on, a, on a sib holding a sail with all his gear in the sib trying to get to France across the water. He was on the run from the police, he'd done something quite serious. But he was that he got to the shipping lane and the ship's all called the Coast Guard. There's a dude on a boat we we can't stop. You know, he's gonna end up getting hit and killed. And yeah, they went out there and armed police were waiting to collect him when they brought him back. But he's in the sib going, No, I don't want no help, I don't want no help, leave me alone and that. But they obviously couldn't leave him there, so they persuaded him to come back and then he was the subject of a nationwide manhunt. So yeah, he got nicked when they brought him back. You just reminded me of it there when you said, could I go over on the Sib? You wouldn't make it past the shipping lane without them calling the Coast Guard or something. And, and they're watching for dinghies. I 
obviously for a lot of the folk that come over illegal illegally on them so you've got to be careful how big is the sib it's a f um oh uh, four point hang on no that's the rods isn't it 4.2 i think the sib's 4.2 as well i can't remember to be honest I know my rods are 4.2. Yeah, it's about the same size as the rods. Yeah, I think it's four meters, four, four meters two or something. I can't remember. I haven't been out on it for so long. So no one's asked me that question. If I was on it now, I could literally just look at the little plaque on the back of it and tell you. What you need, Will, is panic alarm but playing buffering in Virginia, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. If you could get a personalised panic button. A buffering in Virginia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to blow the sib up at some point soon and, and repair the uh, uh, 3.2. Is it 3.2, the sib? It might be sib fishing adventures, I can't remember. That sounds about right, it could be. I know it's something point two. 3.2, is that it? Yeah. It could be. It's the fish sib, the Boat World fish sib. Uh, Harvey, what time's the tide? Uh, I'll have a look quick. It fishes in and out here. So the tides, uh, we'll, it'll still fish with the tide, even when it turns. The only time you struggle to fish in the tides here is when there's seaweed. Because when the tide turns, it drags out all the seaweed with it. But we should be all right. Uh, 10.30, another hour. You treat yourself to Trollance Pope Reach trolley. Game changer. Yeah, I saw one for sale actually the other day on a on a site. Did you buy it brand new or did you buy that one that was being sold? Someone used it once and sold it. A Virginia pint glass and a Fartbox coffee mug. Oh, mate, well done. Nice one. Thank you, Jay, you superstar. Nice, man. Thank you. Yeah, those buffering in Virginia glasses have been very, very popular. There, there, loads of them are sold. Right, that left hand rod's pulling down again. I think we've got seaweed catching that. Just have to keep an eye on that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, when the tide starts to run through here, you can get a bit of seaweed going on. Powered by Trustworthy Fart Box. Yes. Was the shipping all right for you, Jay? Did it say? Not that you don't have to say how much it was but was it okay was it reasonable for you because over here it's ridiculous since we came out of the eu they put all the prices up it was crazy brand new via ebay pixie basher nice yeah i saw one for sale on a site wanted 100 quid for it if i remember right big wheels on it two big wheels Yeah, yeah, I've got my trolley here. I love my trolley. It's reasonable, plus I use my rewards, which covered shipping. Oh, wicked, Jay. Oh, fantastic. Oh, hang on, tippy-tappy. Tippy-tappy. My favourite item is the jumper that I've got on now, the neon T-shirt, which is really good, and the trousers, local marks. Sorry, jogging bottoms. That's my favourite stuff, really solid stuff. Oh, I've just had a message from a friend who's fishing, and I know it's probably going to be a good fish as well. Let me, I just need to look at it. Oh, you jammy, jammy, so and so. 4270 started. Oh, that just, oh, the jealousy is rife. He's had a ray first cast. Disgusting. The rays are all over the place. We won't find one here, we're after bass, but my friend is fishing and he's just had a lovely big ray. First one, first cast. So he's gonna have a busy night.
Right, let's check that right hand bait as 420 started joins us here. Yellow, another train, Lynette. Sucker Jan, Sucker Jan. If you found a ray, that would be very odd. Yeah, oh, it'd be well odd here. LC350, uh, you're still trying for a ray dreaded angler. Right. Yeah, there are, there's a few folk that haven't caught them. I've only caught two. I don't know if I've even had one this year. But I know we caught two within a space of like a week. A really small one and then a half decent one. But I can't remember when it was. If it was actually this year. It was either in December or January, probably. But I might be way wrong because my memory's horrendous. Yeah, terrible. Wow, they've still got a couple of good baits on it. Where are these fish? Where have they gone? If the bite slows right down like that, we've still got a pound of worm left in another bag down here that I haven't opened. We got a pound of worm left in there. Just mud everywhere. It's the only problem with creek venues. Mud all over the place. All up the rods. But it's great fishing. It's almost dry now. I've got it hanging up to dry. Yeah, it's just hanging up to dry that bag, so it's not there for any other reason. Pause the sea fishing, how are you, all right? Just a quick hello as battery on the phone is going to die, but I hope it's all is well. Tight lines, mate. Thank you so much indeed. Will the legend, Gary Scott. Ports of sea fishing, lovely to see you there. Yeah, we're doing all right. We, we're getting into some little bass. We've had a couple of good bites and I lost one earlier. I'm fuming. But we've, we've seen a good bite, so I'm pleased. You know, that's a good ripping bite we had, even though it's a little fish. Isabel is in the house. Isabel, lovely to see you there. I realised I've been calling you Isabel Martin for like years. And then I had a close look the other day and it's Marin. I should have known that. 
Looks a nice bag. Yeah, it's a weight sling, a weighing sling. So it's, um, you hook the handles over your weight, your um, scales and lift up. Yeah, it's a weighing sling. It's got a, a mesh on the bottom of it, like a fabric mesh. So water drips out of it. So when you weigh your fish, if it's wet, you know, you, a lot of it drips out and stones don't get caught in the bag and that, you know. So it's nice putting it up ready for the big one. Oh yeah Lynette, yeah it's there for that as well, there for that as well. We've definitely got it, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, tippy tappy on the right hand rod, ladies and gentlemen. There's a fish, as a little gander, but it's only a small one. The ones we've come for are going to be immediate ripping lines. So these little tippy tappies are nice, we want them ripping lines replace <laughs> yeah that's it Robbie yeah yeah well I've got a new uh, set of scales but I, I still don't think they're capable of weighing a, a 40 pound plus tope Robbie <laughs> yes that's the story ladies and gentlemen so Robbie caught a massive tope I mean it was huge it's on the other channel the team's channel um, on one of the shorts I think and um, Oh, it was huge. It's huge. Robbie's like, you got any scales? I was like, yeah, here you go. And as soon as we picked them up to weigh the fish, just broke the scales immediately. So they were done. I, I trod on my guitar running over there and snapped the head machine head in half. So, um, yeah. Well, advertise yourself on it local, on IT. Well, advertise yourself on it uh robbie gin i have scales i remember them next time yeah we'll need we'll probably need the set you've got they're probably a bit stronger than the ones i use yeah we need luggage scales to weigh the fish you're catching which is what someone suggested after that night actually we need to get the suitcase scales <laughs> but yeah beautiful fish Got you on the TV, mate. Just won't be able to chat. All right, mate. Thank you. Doing good. Thank you. Good luck, mate. Steve, Snacky, Lynette. Pause for sea fishing. Thank you so much, man. Hang on. Tap on the right again. Tap on the right. He's keen. He's keen. Is he going to take it? No. Nice to see little tippy tappies there. Yeah, Mark the B man. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, there's something looking at that rod now. Might have a little fish on there, but I'll just leave it to develop a bit. Yeah, well, I mean, we've got a rod out there that's sitting there quite quietly. That left hand rod as well. You know, that's a good thing. As I say, when it goes, it could just zip off, you know, that's what we want. I remember I came here once and we were, we were packing up and I had a float in the pot. I hadn't used this float for like a year because I don't really do float fishing. I had a float down there. I think we had a couple of worm left and I was like, right, it's time to go. And I just clipped this float on and chucked a bit of worm on. I threw it out, but the wind blew the float in. So it had about a two foot snood on, but the wind blew the float in to the edge down here. And I was like, oh, can't be bothered. We'll leave it there. Anyway, I, I hear the rods and the line takes off. Like literally the line was ripping up off of the surface of the water, like a jet taking off down a runway, you know, with the smoke behind it. But the water was ripping up as this line, and it just pulled tight, whack, and just snapped straight off. I was absolutely fuming. The float popped up to the surface of the water because of the way the line was designed through the center of the float. It just popped up and it just snapped it clean off. Bang, huge bass hit it. But yeah, I was, I was fuming and wasn't expecting it. So I didn't have to drag set proper or nothing. But the way the line lifted from slack line off the water and bang, it was crazy. It was beautiful. James Bryant is there, how do you do? We've had a busy evening on the fish. We've had a busy evening, plenty of school bass. You just Googled a taupe shark. That's exactly the kind of shark. 
a friend caught on the beach years ago, 46 inches. Wow, nice. Yeah, taupe, they're also referred to as a vitamin shark. They're persecuted a lot around the world. So a lot of the um, shark fin soup is made from taupe fins. Yeah, they're, they're, ta they're persecuted big time. We're quite lucky around here because people don't really make the shark fin soup out of them. But in areas of the world where they do, they are one of the number one sources of fins for shark fin soup. And being called a vitamin shark also around the world doesn't help because people believe that eating them, you know, they're full of vitamins and that. <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't, doesn't do them any justice. Or oh, was that a little knock? Float fishing off the rocks and over the reefs in Cornwall can be amazing, Will. Yeah, ironic, so I bet it can. I mean, you've got the best of it down there. Oh, they're protected in the UK, is that right? Yeah, right, got you. Didn't, I didn't know that. We ate it, he gave me a large piece of the tail. I put it in the grill. It was great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind eating one. I wouldn't mind trying one, but I probably never will. It's like dogfish, you know, I wouldn't mind trying one of them, but I'd never prepare it myself. I did try once, I couldn't bring myself to eat it. I got loads of grief over that in the early days on the channel. Because I killed a dogfish, took it home and skinned it and that, and then I just couldn't bring myself to eat, eat it. And I didn't have to get some grief. You killed it for nothing and that. Which was fair enough, I took the grief. They, they were right. But I just couldn't bring myself to eat it. But it done the rest of the dogfish a favour, because if I had have eaten that and liked it, I'd have eaten a lot more of them. <laughs> As it stands, I've not eaten a dogfish to this day. £35 taupe, that's a good taupe. It's a lovely taupe. I see a couple of guys nail a beautiful one on their sibs last year as well. Which is quite amusing. But they did well, I mean I say amusing, it was, it was great. I mean they did brilliant. Dogfish makes nice fish pie, no bones. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Ever since John said about dogfish, you, yeah, urinate through their skin, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and I won't eat mullet, Snacky Jan, no. No, never. A vile, a vile beast. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm surprised that mullet aren't extinct, actually, because, oh, mind you, no saying that. No, they taste vile, so no one's going to eat them. I'm just surprised they haven't been persecuted for their nastiness. <laughs> Your biggest one on scales is 45. Confident that one I had with Will was 50. We will never know. I know it was a beauty. Is there a size limit on bass? Yeah, 42 centimetres, JJ. 42 centimetres. Sometimes doggies can be nice to eat. Other times they can taste of ammonia. I haven't eaten one for years. Charles of Anglin joins us. Lovely to see you there. Don't be a mullet hater, Rids. <laughs> they are vile. Oh, look like a little rattle on that. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that was a nice hit, that. Is he going to come back? Oh, Ken's off to bed. Ah, oh, all right, mate. Take it easy, Ken. Thank you for joining us here this evening. We just got tapped on that rod there, but it didn't pick it up. We'll just leave that another couple of minutes and I'll change that. That one up, one down, I've got... I'm baiting both hooks on it now because the bite has slowed up. The bite will pick up again though as the tide retreats. All those fish that went up will come back down as that tide comes back in. They all push up to the head of the creek, up to the river mouth. You make fish nuggets with dogfish. My little four-year-old girl, girl loves them. Oh wow, nice. Yeah, fish cakes and nuggets and stuff like that you can make. Same with whiting a lot. A lot of folk make the fish cakes with the whiting. Quite nice. <sighs> wow, I slept like a baby last night. Yeah, fell out of bed, cried. <laughs> no, no, it was nice to finally have a good night's kip. It's been a long time coming. Right, let's check.
check that right hand rod again. We've had a couple of bites on that. Let's get some more bait on there. Xander tastes nice, yeah. Oh, I saw a friend. Well, I say a friend. I've met him. We've chatted. We've had a cook up on the beach. So I consider him a friend. He was a friendly guy. But I saw him catch a fish the other day. I can't think of the name of it now, though. He's abroad somewhere. Oh, what was it? It's a fish I always imagined to be quite small, but the one he was holding was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, cried all night and pooped my pads. Surely we can sort this out like responsible adults, can't we, Mr. Puppy Pants? <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Dave knows. Big bars of silver out there. Just one big bang. I know it could all change in a second. One second and that rod screams off. I mean, we're in the right place for it. If it's going to happen, it's going to be here. I need to get my hat back on. It's a chilly breeze now, I'm my ear old. I think it's only dropping to nine degrees tonight though. But I haven't got my thermals on because it's only dropping to nine degrees. That wind seems to be picking up. It's either picking up or changing direction. Because the wind was supposed to be dropping. And when we got here, there was no wind, but it was coming from there. Now it's over there. We're getting a breeze, a chilly one. Oh, some gold too. The code is thousands of miles between us. Oh, right, let me get my top on. Oh, there's another blue light over there. It's the fish police. There was old bill everywhere today. Flying round in their helicopter and also chasing i think they were chasing someone i was i filmed the helicopter i got some wicked footage of a police helicopter he was well low over the house flying right round over the top of my place where i'm staying or just constantly round and round and round and round and then you could hear the sirens all tearing up the road and that it was mad well, I've got some wicked footage. I'll uh, have to upload it somewhere. Robbie Mullane, lovely to see you there. How do you do? We're doing all right. We've had a few fish. The bite has slowed off towards the high tide now, which is, it always does that. So that's expected. It should pick up as it goes back the other way. Or we could hit a big fish in this quiet period. But we shall see. What happens? Sheena Rosia, hola buenas tardes. 
as Sheena joins us here today. Lovely to see you this evening joining us here waiting for Tippy Tappy ladies and gentlemen waiting for Tippy Tappy hopefully we'll see it soon sorry John the Nightbot has nailed your comments was it going was it yeah, we only had, it, it's not going now though, so it was probably just a little bite. I mean, I'll have a look, but usually if there's a fish on it, it goes sort of constantly. Come out of the house tonight and young lad had fallen off his moped. I said, stand back, out of the way. They said, are oh, you a doctor? I said, no, that's my pizza. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Turn it in. I thought you were serious then. <laughs> yeah, so the secret to a fish being on there is if it's constantly going. Uh, and the fish that we want, that rod will be tearing off. But um, if there is one on there now, it, it'll be tiny, I guess. But no, there's nothing on there, I can feel it. Uh, this is why the night bot takes it off. When someone says right rod, left rod, the night bot removes it so I don't see it because there's no point in it. Because if the fish is on, I'll know about it because the rod will be just going constantly. In most cases. Like that bass we had earlier. <laughs> I mean, I've seen every bite so far and landed every fish that's been on. Oh, absolutely beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, wait for more tippy tappy, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, fish. Come on. It's nice when the tide's like this, or when the water's at this stage where you can leave them. You don't have to worry. The baits aren't being stripped. You, I mean, you know, don't want to leave them for hours but they can sit on the bottom there till a nice big fish comes along motors are tooting their horns ladies and gentlemen as they go past time for my girls two girls to take for walkies all right yes all right peter awesome awesome Okay, well, we should still be here when you get back. Like I say, we've got loads of bait. We are running out of the first batch. I don't think we're going to get through it all. we got loads of bait and the bite's sort of dropped off now. I'll for your first session soon, Steve, along. As long as my car gets through the MOT next week, right? Yes. Hopefully so. Yeah, MOT's always a... Bit of a nightmare. It's a problem down 
by the sea as well because the salt water is so corrosive. You know, where I'm fishing by the beach all the time, driving on slipways and near beaches with the car set just back in all the spray, the uh, salt water is a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. I managed to um, sort out the squeaky suspension though by spraying new uh, WD-40 all over it. That worked. And it's still not squeaking, so it's worked for quite some time as well. I was quite pleased with that. It's making a horrendous noise. Oh, it's 22 years old, Steve. Yeah, nice. Nice motor, nice old car. Hopefully it goes through then if it's one that you sort of love and you've been trying to keep going. Or is it 22 years old but you've only sort of owned it for five sort of thing. Is it one of them? Either way it'd be nice for it to pass. Nice new top that. Are you modelling a new spring wardrobe of clothing? Am I Rids? No, this is my winter. I've had this on almost every night through the winter. And oh, usually underneath my waterproof, so I guess you don't get to see it. And now I've had this for ages. But I, I don't have my thermal gear on, so I've got this top on. Usually if I've got my thermal gear, I've just got this down on the trolley behind me but I've put it on now it's a mustad top from last car saloon actually oh the car owes you nothing now right okay you got used to the yellow vas yeah 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 I've usually got I usually put this on under the vas or if it's not raining, I wear this. Is it your new hat that you're putting on? Oh yes, Penny, it is. Yeah, I forgot about that. I was putting a hat on, wasn't I? Yeah, yeah, my new hat from the Fish Locker Lazy German, handed to me by him, which is really nice. There's been a couple of things like that that have been, that have been really nice. You know, that left-hand rod over there, the red one, was handed to me as a donation by Steve D. And then this hat, handed up by John Locker and then I was given a book the other day that was written by Sweetcorn Kid you know it's really nice when you get that sort of stuff it's got that personal connection to it it's nice you know like I had my hat my backside handed to me once as well <laughs> Yeah, you get that nice personal connection. And the rod handed to me, the hat handed to me, and the backside was handed to me at one point. <laughs> All deserved, thank you. Thank you, Rids. Ollie's got the vast smock. Yeah, the quality. Quality. Those for that vast gear. Ian Watson's in the house. Lovely to see you there. Thank you for joining us as we see a motion on the right hand rod there, but I'm not sure if it's going to go. No, they're well quiet now, aren't they? When we arrived, those rods were going nuts. Proper nuts. Hopefully that bite will pick up again a bit. Makes me wonder, because I, mean, I chose this venue tonight because of the tides, they were perfect. Because when, when it's low tide, you can't catch a fish really and pull it across the mud. Because if it comes off, it will die. Because you're not going to be able to get across the mud to put it back in. So the tides were perfect tonight, because when we arrived, the water was just close enough for us to bring the fish in without covering the mud. Uh, Bluebirds, Mr. Paul Bluebirds is in the house. Lovely to see you there. 
looked up. Oh, Jay, sorry. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Um, it's doing really well. We've had a few fish. We've had a few fish, a few bass. One of them was a lovely pull down, so I'm quite pleased. I'm quite content that we had that lovely bite from that bass. That was nice. After missing that one that I had on, which was a bit of a gutter because we'll never know. But that one that we landed actually pulled better. So it makes me think that other fish might not have been as big as it felt. It's great uh, a few of you YouTubers promote each other's channels. You all do your own thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, why not? I mean, that's why I created the group as well. So people can promote their stuff on there. It's great to see Gary actually doing so well with the dog blockers. That's nice, man. Seeing that developing business. It's really good. Uh, uh, yeah, when it's a bit warmer, Rids, there's none around at the moment. I've been looking, but I ain't seen none. Yeah, the little eyes lighting up. Yeah, it's been actually really quiet for those. And the, I think where the water's been, we've had all these back-to-back -back storms smashing up the rocks. So those, you know, violent waves hitting them rocks all the time. I think the fish... The shrimp have moved out from them. Just found shelter in deeper water, possibly. Because I have been looking, but sometimes the water's totally murky. You can't see a thing. And when it has been clear, I haven't been able to find them. But yeah, as it warms up, hopefully they'll start to recolonize. I haven't seen many crab out on the open rocks as well, but there's plenty in the harbors. JJ's got them all. <laughs> JJ's got them all. Uh, Black Gosport Park, Black Bridge. There were tons of shrimp in there in the summer. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's the particularly large ones. That, there's prawns that I pick. Yeah, prawns from the rocks. My little eyes lit up today, a galaxy went through its MOT with no advisories, Ian. Nice. I will come out with you when you're off camera and we can go and find some. I won't be rope swinging though. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's fun. It's risky. And it's extremely painful. Yeah, my finger's been playing up. It was horrible the first couple of weeks after that because I couldn't play, you know, because that's my fretting hand. The one that I broke the finger on. Oh, hang on, was that a little pull there? Yeah, so I broke one of the fingers on my fretting hand. And when I did a slide, it bent the bone over and, oh, just, it was not pleasant. Not pleasant. For anyone who's not aware who's watching, I fell off a rope swing, ladies and gentlemen, whilst live. The video's been quite popular and very amusing. And uh, it's nice because it brings a smile to people's faces. Uh, yeah, I did, Jack. Yeah, I broke my finger. Yeah, busted the bone out the side. Well, not compound fracture, but if it had gone much further, it would have been. Yeah, it's a must-see video. It's brilliant. But yeah, I, I busted my finger. I, I remember looking at my hands at the time because I felt I felt the finger go, but I didn't I didn't know if it was broken. So I, I sort of shook my hands out and I was like, oh, we've got away with it. But then the next day, it was well playing up, and now. The bone is sticking out from the side of the finger, just pushing against the skin. You probably can't see it on there, I don't know. Let's see if you can see.
Sorry, Harvey, I'm not sure what that, what you mean by that. Am I missing something there? I think he's having a wind up, isn't he? <laughs> What's... Have I missed something? What would you mean, Harvey? So it was that finger here, but the bone sticks out the side. So it sort of goes across to the side and it's pushing out there, but it just plays up now when I do slide guitar. Steve is back. You broke your fishing in September. I didn't realise that, mate. It was a prop fun. Oh, no, it's funny. Oh, no, it's funny. It is funny. You broke your wrist. Wow, that sounds mad, that train. You broke your wrist fishing, wow. Stinky Jan, Stinky Jan. Everybody in the house, come on. Stinky Jan, Stinky Jan, Stinky Jan. I saw a video of someone breaking their arm, wow. Not very nice. Fell over a bucket. Oh no. I broke my toe as well, you know. Broke my toe. One day when we're actually here, I broke my toe here. Which wasn't very nice. There we go, sorted. All sorted. You know when you have just gasp but have to look. Yes. I'm not the only one with the snacky jam. Earworm. <laughs> no, it's a banging tune. You know when you just gasp. It was nice, mate. Never even looked at it before. Taking it was expected to fail. Saw a video of someone breaking their arm. Oh. This was also the spot that Will did his disappearing act. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I broke my toe here trying to get in my waders. So they were really tight. So I brought them as a size 12. Well, they were more like a size 10 feet. So I couldn't get in them. So while I was trying to put one foot in one of the waders, I slipped and my other foot came down and I basically just kicked the floor while we were live. And that was painful, man. Snapped my toe. That video's still out there somewhere. Expecting mine to fail, just a question of how big the bill is going to be. Come on, fishy, tippy tappy. Just watch the rope swing. I didn't want to get up yet. That's a full. Send fail. <laughs> I don't want to get up here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Wally, yeah. Have you not seen it before? Yeah. Yeah, it was proper, mate. Proper. Yeah. I left the video up because it's funny. It's good. And people need that. You know, they need that laugh. <laughs> I won't put the link up while Will is live. But search on the channel's shorts listings. And it was five months ago and called Epic Fail. The rest is history. No, you can stick the link up if people would like to watch it. Yeah, I done my, I broke my finger, I busted my elbow up. You hadn't seen it, wicked. It made you laugh. Yeah, it's a big old drop. Yeah, it was a proper drop. I fell about fifteen foot to the floor. 
like literally, I mean, I'm six foot, and I had to clamber up the bank and get on the rope swing and then swing out, and it broke. I nearly landed back in the sib. <laughs> it was quality, it was quality. I didn't want to move though, because I didn't know what I'd broken. No, I didn't bounce, I, I didn't bounce. No, I hit that floor and that's where I remained. Because I landed on a bottle on my elbow. So that's what cut through my top and into my elbow. So, and I felt the pain of that and I didn't know if my arm was broken. I didn't realise, you know, till after that I landed on a bottle. But yeah, I, but I thought I just broke my arm. And I was like, oh, I'm not moving. No, this is not good. We're live. <laughs> Tested it by pulling it first. Yeah, yeah. Yep. A ball of lord and rope full screen. <laughs> I tested it. Yeah, it was it looked proper that. It looked proper. It did. It looked like it was well made. I mean I knew the rope was a bit thin, but there was you know, there was a bit of rope either side, so I thought it'll hold me. You know, rope is strong, isn't it? You know, it's rope, isn't it? You know, you more boats up with that stuff. But no, I jumped on there and that was it. It was great for the... I, I mean, I swung out and it was great. But I could I could hear the strain on the rope. You know, that... that Almost like a twisting sound of... And I thought, I'm in trouble here. And then it broke. It should, it's in every <laughs> risk assessment course worldwide, yeah. All health and safety checks. <laughs> yeah, tons of smashed glass. Yeah, it's good we can laugh about it. It was great. I wanted to leave it up for the laugh. It was quality. It was quality. And I've watched it back a few times and it, it is good. <laughs> it is good. Yeah. I haven't caught many of my, you know, mad moments like that on films. So that was nice to actually finally get one. It created quite a laugh. Oh, the link is above. Thank you, Rids. Thank you. Yeah, it's worth having a look at that one, guys. You'll be very amused. <laughs> the best bit was saying it, that's a proper dodgy rope swing and still had a go. <laughs> you should have seen the strain on my stomach muscles. Yeah. Talking of teams, still up for it whenever. Um, haven't pestered weather, sickness, etc., but no rope swings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been horrendous. The weather, uh, well, the circumstances have been not good. It, it is, you've been framed still about, you could earn some money off that one. <laughs> I don't think they are. I don't think they are. It's funny, a lot of the places I've tried to send it to they won't accept links to youtube channels so it's strange but um i did share it about but like i say most of them didn't accept it don't accept links oh nick the fish is off to bed nick take care man and be safe we shall see you on the next one hopefully i'm gonna rebate that rod the best rise from the dead since Tyson fury off the canvas against john a wilder <laughs> it was good the best bit is when you said i'm just gonna lie here a while <laughs> yeah i didn't want to get up danny thank you danny seen it <laughs> yeah i mean i didn't know if i had broken legs broken arms it was it was a strange feeling because I landed on my side and that's just where I remained like bang and I was there and I just thought right that hurts something's got to be broken uh, well my, my finger was broken but I think it was the rope that broke that on the way down just the the force in the rope and the sudden snap just broke my finger uh, Shockwave's lovely to see you there. Thank you. You should have an ouch button. Lee Flay, lovely to see you back in. You all right? The gates of heaven opened and shut momentarily. <laughs> Do miss you cruising in the sib with the waders. 
well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be back out there at some point. Well, the spinning on the rope one was funny. Yeah, that was good, Keith. I was ill after that. I was really ill. That, that, that really made me sick. Yeah, that did. That was good. My glasses flew off my face. I remember that one. I panicked a bit because I was spinning so fast. I didn't know which way they'd gone or where they were. So I, I think I remember calling Dave over. I was like, Dave, my glasses, man. <laughs> Lost my glasses. But thankfully, we were filming it, actually. Yeah, and I remember someone said they went that way. <laughs> and we found them because you guys were watching. Otherwise, I probably would never have found my glasses. <laughs> I'd done a nice slip and slide at the weekend fishing. The alarms went off. Down the hill I went. Oh, no, shot waves. <laughs> Ouch. Hopefully you were okay. But yeah, that, that we've had some quality times. Ollie goes fishing, wow! Make a 150 pound mon <laughs> mono swing. <laughs> <coughs> That'll probably be just as much joy or use <laughs> as the other one. Guys, thank you so much indeed. Ollie goes fishing, you legend. It did smithy, it looked perfectly safe <laughs> until I was 10 foot over the bank <laughs> and then it didn't look, feel very safe. Ollie goes fishing, you absolute legends. You absolute legend. We've had a, a super chat, ladies and gentlemen, you absolute star. <laughs> panic. Don't panic. Oh, Lee. Panic. Guys, thank you. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, Lee Flay has done a super chat as well. Lee, you absolute legend. Guys, thank you so much, man. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. Yeah, we've survived everything that's happened so far. You know, got to be careful. You know, when you're live, I might come a cropper one day doing something. But, you know, we've, we've done all right so far. Fell down that bank there and survived it. Fell off the swing, survived that. Spun round, survived that. Broke my toe. Broke, I broke two bones whilst on this channel live. So I broke my toe and my finger. Hopefully I won't break my, my, my neck or something, you know. But we'll just have to see. Keep watching to see if we make it out alive. <laughs> Lee, thank you so much indeed, mate. You had two additions. So Lee Flay of Local Marts Fishing also with an amazing... Super Chats. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, the SBS. I've got to be careful about that one, Rids, I think. I'm surprised I haven't had any comebacks on that. So I've been debating whether or not to take that video down. Because... Well, I mean, I didn't know I was you weren't allowed under there. But then I didn't know you weren't allowed to take a, a bass from the sib, and I got in trouble for that. Oh, actually, in fact, I think I might have already taken that video down. Yeah, I think it's gone. Yeah, it's probably gone. There'll be a two pirate soon on the sib, eye patch and wooden leg. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, the SBS one was hairy. I nearly got shot by the SBS. I, I was in a place I weren't supposed to be and I didn't know it. They thought I'd put a bomb underneath a little platform thing and that. And um, so the police stopped me and then they got the SBS to have a look under. I was trying to escape on my kayak. <laughs> oh, Jackie, you absolute superstar. Jackie, thank you so much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Jack E of Local Marks Fishing also with an amazing super chat. You absolute star, guys. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I fell down the Hasler wall. I've only ever done that once. I fell down the Hasler wall. I was lucky with that. That could have been nasty. If I'd have banged my head, th that would have been game over. But it was so steep that I just fell and just landed just nicely, just right. But yeah, lucky it weren't on the really lumpy bit, or so I could have cracked my head open. Jack E, thank you so much, man. Absolutely fantastic, thank you. 
Arthur's still waiting for a new rope swing. Oh, Chris, was it Arthur? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Sorry, Chris. I am sorry. I know. Do you know what, though, Chris? Someone, their daughter, it was the guy who runs the Hampshire Bass Enthusiasts, his daughter fell off of that rope swing in the same place where I was, and she uh, broke her, I think she broke her back and her elbow, her arm. She broke her arm and or she misaligned her spine or something so i did the little ones a favor by breaking that by the sound of it because yeah 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 he's, i can't remember his name but his daughter come off it and actually broke done herself damage they had the ambulance coast guard and everything out for uh uh jackie thank you so much you absolute legend Oh, listen, that sounds like my bass taking off. Not too long ago, you disappeared out of cam view. We all thought you'd fallen in. Yeah, that was here, Lee. Robert Kelting, that was it, Jack. Yeah, Robert Kelting's daughter, because he was. I was talking to him after. He's like, oh, you fell off that swing. He's, and then he explained about his daughter falling off it. I mean, I hope I've got that right, and it was him. I did something like that before where I said a name, and it was the wrong guy, and I got in a bit of trouble. I think it was Robert, whose daughter fell off it. He wrestled a 21 pound conger in the surf. Yeah, wrestled a 21 pound conger. That was good. Yeah, that was good. That conger was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. I, I'm hoping to target them again soon in that area. You always have your GPS on your person, Lee. Yeah. Oh, when I'm out on the SIB, I do. Yeah, I've got a GPS. Well, I've got, it's a PLB, I've got a PLB, which is GPS as well. I've got a face slapped by a dogfish. Yeah, yeah, we've had some uh, experiences, nearly blew a boat up with a firework. <laughs> Rids. <laughs> that boat over there, funnily enough. Right, let me bring that rod in and check the bait, guys. Um, it's been out there for a minute. It might have been pecked off by now. Uh, you did do the next... Oh, sorry. You did do the next person a favour breaking before they died on the swing pot. Yeah, potentially or broke their neck or something. Yeah, what else could happen life? Yeah. It's almost great butted by a 27-pound gogler. You have, mate. I didn't like them all over there. Uh, now you see them swimming off the pontoon at Hardway in the summer. Yeah, I saved a kid at the pontoon. I can't remember who I was with. I was on my kayak, there were three of us. And there was a kid jumped off the pontoon in a big spring tide and he got caught in it and he couldn't make it back. He was tired and he started calling for help. And all the, all the other kids were on the end of the pontoon like, like, like swim, swim, swim. But he obviously couldn't. But it was just lucky that we were coming back. So I rode out to him and he grabbed the back of my kayak and I rode him back to the pontoon. I can't remember who, who I was with. But it was a long time ago anyway. Right, let's get these baits baited up.
Looks like we're going to have a pound of worm left over here. Weight on that, it's got to be seaweed on there. Or an eel. Oh no, it's a bass. Here you are. Fish on. Oh, and then we caught some seaweed as well. Was foul worked, guys. I'm gonna get him back in the water quick to give him a good chance. Whoa! Oh, he's well lively. Yeah, he's all right. So I think when I cast out, the hook must have caught him on the way down. Your fluke. Give it a light chuck.
Oh, beautiful. Oh, what a night. Mesmerizing, hypnotizing me. Thank you for sharing the Sirius fireworks and the Sea Weights links, ladies and gentlemen. Sirius fireworks have been amazing to us. They really have. You'll get a 15% discount on your fireworks from there if you quote LMF15 as the discount code. And their fireworks are quality. You know, not like little whiz pop ones, they're proper booming fireworks. I mean, even their small packets are quality. You know, are contain quality, very loud fireworks. Absolutely amazing. We'll be getting a few more from there when we hit 10,000 subscribers. Absolutely, they are incredible. The pizza fun bag <laughs> is right up there. If you don't believe Will, ask the man on the boat. Yeah, I know. It, the boat is there. That boat is right there. Yes. <laughs> Right, I'm going to munch a sandwich, 10k very soon. Yeah, I reckon just beginning of next year, maybe. Should be there. Early 25. It's ham circles. It's nice though, it's that cured ham. The grand unwrapping. <laughs> I do have a, I think it's a BLT sandwich. Yeah, I've got a BLT as well, but I've got the last of the ones that I made, which I'm eating here at the moment. Thank you guys, we have hit loads of likes. I mean, I knew the bike was gonna get quite a high tide, but I've gotta be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be this quiet. I wasn't expecting it to be this quiet, ladies and gentlemen. nice ham this it's like that um, oh I had the name oh gammon that's it it slipped my mind there <laughs> but it's nice oh uh, gammon I think gammon's pork but and this is definitely ham there's a monster out there scaring the little ones away March for 8k, right. Drew's in the house. Drew, lovely to see you joining us here this evening. Is your chat working now? Is it working all right? Oh, you did as well, Gary, yeah. I love gammon. It's really nice with mustard and that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Racing's is in the house. Racing's easy. Honey roasted. Yeah. Funnily enough, that's how it feels when the missus has had a go at you. 
you like you've been honey roasted and that. Hey, Stuart, how you doing? Evening, only fishing for bass. Yes, I thought the same went where there's a will, there's a ray. Yes, I'm going 10k by Christmas. Guys, 300 likes, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely outstanding. Turn it in. Bingo! <laughs> Bingo! 300 likes, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely outstanding. 300, 300, 300. Guys, thank you so much indeed. Fantastic. Let's go, Beards and Bass. We're at the wall. Nathan just caught and lost the biggest congreal we've ever seen. Came off on the lower deck and spam back into water. Honestly, ginormous. Yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt. There's massive congers out there. I'm actually making up a big conger rig to target him. We were talking about it earlier on. I'm going to try and... Um, I lost a big one yesterday, actually. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I always take my net to that wall because you're going to need it for those big ones. Sorry to hear that you lost there. Would have been nice to see what that was. Yeah, that's a shame. I want to catch a 20 pound congreal in the Solent from the beach because I know they're there. So you probably lost one around about 20 pound then. Well, I mean, what, what would you say? What would you say the weight was? Ladies and gentlemen, 300 likes, you absolute legends. Absolutely beautiful. It's bang on high tide. Right, okay, all right. Well, it should, as it turns, hopefully the bite will pick up a little bit more. You know, it's nice when it goes like this, but it's not nice when we're not getting bite any bites at all. You know, we want some of those big old bites to come back in. <laughs> Nathan, Nath the kids. The thing was about the same length as me, and I've never felt a fish like it before. And I've had some big bass, but that felt like 20 plus for sure. The net is in the car, difficult to say, pushing 20 for sure, yeah. Yeah, oh mate, gutted. What bait did you have it on? Was there a squid on there? Squid combo or squid or mackerel? Or a squid and mackerel combo. I'm going to ask you lots of questions now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, we had better go while looking to the car park at the pole pole. They're looking at my car and I don't know what for. So come on, everybody now. We had better go at the Oh, no, we had better go while looking to the car park at the pole pole. Uh, he inspired me and Lawrence to give it a go through the winter months, Rids, showing the fish are still about, giving the confidence. Nice. Bits and bass, the legend is in the house. Man, yeah, they're a big conga. So that's an eyewitness account. They're two eyewitness accounts of a, a conga, either 20 plus or pushing 20 pounds. This, my target is a 20 pound conga in the Solent. They are there now. I felt the weight of some big old congas on the end of my rod there. It's a gutter that you lost it though. That one, that's a shame. <coughs> It'd be even nice to see one landed. Mackerel head and guts, got you, yeah. Yeah, it's usually mackerel or squid involved with those big ones. Yeah. Oh man, I was using mackerel head up there the other day as well. Fed most of it to the fox, tippy tappy on the right hand rods. Oh man, I can't believe it. I'm gutted to hear that. It would have been nice to, if it was landed. Like I say, it'd even be nice to see a 20 for anyone to catch a 20 because I'm, I'm just, I know they're there. The congas at the, at the moment that are out there, there's loads of them and it's really good. The fishing for them is fantastic. Earwig, you're welcome. You're off to bed, Earwig. All right, mate, take care. Be safe and thank you for joining us here this evening. 
for local Mark's fishing live was crazy no way i was getting it up a fifth on a 50 gram rated rod and super thin braid yeah oh what a shame but at least you've got that experience now you know that you need that net with you next time and a part of the wall where you can get it up you know there's the steps there you can go down but the really big ones like that you've got to be so careful because you're dealing with a fish that can bite your hand off as well well fingers so yeah it's there's so many dangers with them you just got to be so careful yeah you saw it yeah oh, i'd love to go there and nail it it's great to hear there's one there Well, I mean, there's several there, but it's good to see a two eyewitness accounts of a nice one. That's good, that's quality. That's quality. So I like to hunt the old legends and the myths, ladies and gentlemen, you know. That's what happened when I went and fished Ports of Harbour and we had that 23-pound 20, uh, 23 conger there. In sign sight, it was happy to jump in and grab it, lunatic, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I did with mine. I had to leap on it. I was I was waist deep in water. I was kneeling down, but the water came up around my waist. It was dangerous when I think of it. But I weren't thinking at the time. But yeah, we fished Ports of Harbour one time because I'd been told about this big conger that a, a bloke had got. He was fishing with his lad on a little tender around this oil jetty and he said he caught this conger and it came up and he the dad grabbed the rod off his kid and just straight cut the line and i was like wow where was that and he gave me the mark and we went there and i caught a 23 pound conger on it so hearing that there's a, a big conger in the vicinity of the wall now is just reason for anyone and everyone to get down there with a big conga bait because it will stay in the area if it's there we'll have to get over there at some point and have a go if it's not caught in the next week by someone else we'll we'll go and have a go you're new to sea fishing. What do you use to unhook a conger? I, um, I'll show you. I'll show you what I use to unhook a conger eel. Um, hang on. So I've got two main bits of kit. This is one of them. So that's one of my conger unhooking tools. I really only use this for congers. There's nothing, or, or rays. So any fish that poses a hazard to your fingers, congers and rays. And then also this. This is the safest one to use because you don't you don't have to get too technical with it. And if you if you use this correctly, you get the line in one end and the hook in the other and just separate the two and it pops out. So this is the safest method. This one here, you can grab the conger and it, it can spin and it, it can be a problem. And the conger has to have his mouth open for you to get these in. You know, sometimes they'll clamp their gob down and, and that's when you need to push this tool in there to get to the hook. But yeah, so I've these are my two heavy bits of kit for conger and rays. And I've got a smaller version of that stainless steel bar for other fish as well.
So there's the two sizes. Yes, John. Yeah, that, that is the case in some cases. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier on about the, the fish will disperse through the water column as the tide rises. The little fish and they'll also push up further. So there's the two different ones that I use. The little one for just little fish or little strap congers and that or small rays or, or anything you can use this one for anything if the fish's mouth is big enough when you push this into a, a fish's mouth you gotta watch because you're going through there but this here this this extension here can damage the gills so you gotta be careful with this if i had it my way i'd cut that off i'd like i'd like to i'd like that cut off because when you push it in there, it, it can catch the gills and that, and it's horrendous. So I got this smaller one. I mean, even if that length between, you can see that that one's quite close to the main bar, where that one's wide and a long way out. Even if that was in a little bit closer, it would make it better. But when it's wide like that, and you've got a big conger with big gills all over the place, I don't like it. That that can catch gills and what will happen is if you accidentally catch a gill with this trying to pull it out and then you've got to push down you get that catching a gill and, and it can be stuck between two gills you know so this this bit here shouldn't I don't know what it's for I mean well I know it's for pushing a hook but when you've got a deep hook fish the idea is you want to get this in deep to get to the deep hook and that's what it's ideally for i'm looking deep hook fish that's why the length for the bar but but then this becomes a problem but then that's when i employ this one because it's the gate is not so wide on there and it's not getting caught between two gills you can see that that angle there is set back from this angle here it says that i can get my finger between the two as opposed to this one where you can't get your finger between the two gaps. So when you're stuck between gills on that, you can't turn it and get it out. But when you're stuck between gills on this, you can push it forward to release one and back to release the other and work your way out. If you get stuck in gills, you can't do that with this big one. So yeah, it's, but yeah, those are my bits of kit for it. If you're holding the line in one hand and the T-bar in another, how do you keep the fish still? Well, it's all about the skill, Steve. It, that's, that's where the skill set comes in for it. I mean, that is how you use them. Yeah, it's a disgorger. Yes, Gary, yeah, it's a T-bow, a T-bar. A T-bar disgorger. It's, I mean, it's, it's just called a T-bar. But you can put a T-bar disgorger. Sit on the fish to unhook it. How do you get the world's famous rubber hooks out? <laughs> just pull them straight. Pull them straight out. Yeah, that, that is how, how you use it, though. It, it, it's a method that's done quick. So when... So congas are quite placid if you're not touching them and sort of... They're angry when you touch them. It's the heat from your body. So you're pulling them from a freezing cold water onto a, a beach. You pull them out the freezing cold water onto the beach and then we touch fish with our hands and that's a shock to them and they don't like it. But if you get a, a big conger out and get it on the deck, it will sit still. So while it's sitting still, you can just hold the line, put the disgorger on the line and slide it down the line into the conger's mouth. If it starts to move, just pull the disgorger out. But if you can push that disgorger onto the hook while you're holding the line in your hand, then it's just a one quick motion, boom. You push the, the line down and pull the disgorger up and it, and it immediately 
releases the hook using the body weight of the fish as well so if you're quick you can push the line one way and pull the fish and the disgorger and the hook up the other way and that pulls the hook too small for congas yeah I've got another disgorger over there that's small you've probably got the same one with the little round wire bit on the end that's what I use for all the other fish like whiting bass small bass it depends on the density of the what's in the fish's gob as well if they've got really dense meat in the, in their jaw you know you might require a slightly or if you've got a large barb you know if you're using large barbs that can you can need might need some heavy gear for that but most standard fishing you can use the little sort of blue or red disgorgers i'm not sure what they're called but i've got one over there a lot of what's in that tackle box is there for getting hooks out of fish's gobs so I don't like leaving hooks in fish. The priority is to get that fish unhooked, that hook out of its mouth and the fish released safely. Especially with the big fish, because you've probably tied them out fighting them to the beach. You've got a th one three foot long front hooking alongside the boat sharks with, yeah, for the sharks. Yeah, yeah, the Solar Warrior's got one as well that's massive, so he doesn't have to go near the gob of it. You just hold the main line, then slide this huge thing down the line, and then do the same technique. Line one way, disgorge and hook the other way, use the body weight of the fish, and pop it, pop the hook out. Also, fishermen, lovely to see you there. Yeah, Steve, it's, it's good to, to get them back in. You know, the way they naturally swim around with no hooks in their gob. Yeah. Come on, bite. Please pick up now. Come on. Come on. Let's have some more tippy-tappy. Do it. Tippy tappy, do it. It's gone a little bit quiet, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit. Oh, there was blue lights. I thought I could see some coming along. all right though it's nice and chill nice and chill by the water ladies and gentlemen so it looked like this was fishing really crazy um, sort of mid tide up which is when we arrived but then if we'd have arrived a bit earlier I think it would have been fishing like mad as well but like I say if there's not a lot of water if you get a good fish on you can't release it And that is a problematic. A do 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 do. Problematic. Would it skip up, skip it to? Problematic. Uh, skip it dip dip it do. Still early. 22.49 ladies and gentlemen, 22.49, that is well early, yeah, got to stay up until 12am to take my daughter to the coach, she is going to Barcelona with the school, oh fair enough, Is the coach coming to... Oh, you've got to take them to the coach. 
Oh God, so you've got to wait up really late and then drive them, oh, to the school, right. Yeah, drive them to the school to get the coach. Ah, uh, yeah, take her to the coach, right. Got you. Awesome. Oh yeah, that is awesome. Barcelona. Wow, that would be an amazing trip then, wouldn't it, eh? Absolutely fantastic. That coach must be big to get a school in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go to Barcelona with the school. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. How are you going to get a school in there? <laughs> to Barcelona. LC, lovely to see you joining us here this evening. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, Stacky Jan likes Barcelona. 40 kids going from my daughter's school. Awesome. No, it's great that you've been able to give her that opportunity to go, you know, in collaboration with the school as well. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely magic. Bom, ba, bom, bom. It's absolutely magic. Bom, ba, bom, bom. It's absolutely magic. It cost you 710 quid. Blimey. Well, you've done, done well to get her there, though. No, fair play. Blimey, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Mind you, yeah, it is Barcelona. It's not like they're just going to the Natural History Museum and that. Wow. Are you paying for the entire coach? That's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And fuel. <laughs> oh, I mean it sounds like a lot of money, but I mean is what what is the standard rate for going to Barcelona for an adult? I mean I don't know anything about that sort of thing, so you know, it might be like two grand, usually standard. So is that a good price or is that, you know, is that a lot for a child? I guess it's covering a bit of the coach and that as well. Mind you, yeah, that probably don't sound too bad. Yeah, for that amount of time in Barcelona, 710 quid, that's all right. For a, for a holiday. Experience, expensive, Jan, yeah. Most probably. Pawn the teacher's fair. Oh, paying the teacher's fair, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that probably is how it works. I imagine that would be included somewhat in the costs as they're going with the school and I guess as the school's 
arranged it, yeah, they probably factor in the cost of the teachers because they have to go with them. One of the perks of being a teacher, you get to go on trips like that paid for. No, that's for her coach and her flight and the hotel, right. Awesome. That is pretty good though. All the kids seem to go away abroad with the school. It was just the history museum when I was at school. How times change. Well, that's that's why I was saying, you know, it's not like they're going to the history museum. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't even go there when I was younger. Yeah. Back in the day. Oh, there's the bomb squad. Barcelona. I think it's average price to be fair. We just paid over 200 quid for the granddaughter to stay two nights in London. Yes. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it certainly pays to make friends in London. If that's a, ve a venue that people are going to, you know, stay at a mate's house and that. Yeah. Barcelona. More blue lights. Is there another bomb squad truck? Are we going to see it? It is. Oh, and there's another one. Blimey, we've got the, like the bomb squad going in a, going all the way up there. What's that all about? You went to Colmendy in Wales. I bet that was exciting still. Wales is a beautiful place, you know, it does, it does look beautiful. Your granddaughter went to New York with the school, 10 days over a grand. Wow. Yeah, wicked. I suppose it's it's worth it if they get something from it other than a holiday. Yeah, you know, I guess you know, like if they make friends over there and contacts and that. You know, with these school trips. Yeah, we paid a. F well, we didn't pay a fortune. We went to the science museum. Everyone else went to the natural history, but we couldn't pay the fortune. But we went to the science museum and had a look around. It was like, oh great, we've seen a load of sciencey stuff. And then we came home, but it, it didn't have any really sort of productive purpose. Thinking, I just went up there, saw a load of sciencey stuff, and came home and was like, oh well, yeah, great, we've seen a lot of stuff, but didn't really gain anything from it but it costs you know the school money the people that paid the real money went to the natural history museum I think we got the science one for free actually because you either had to pay for the history museum or you got a free trip to the science museum so we went to the science museum Yeah. 
Barcelona. Scooby Doo. I remember going to somewhere in London to see the planets which were in the roof of the building. Can't remember what it was called, Lynette. That's got to be the Natural History Museum, is it? Oh no, it might have been the Science Museum. That might have been the science one. You had a week in York at school. That was good. Great place. Nice. Yeah, that's probably the Science Museum, Lynette, with planets in the roof. Just around the corner from the uh, old oh, planetarium. Oh, is that right, Coastal Market? The planetarium. Oh, is there a place called the planetarium? Yeah. Well, that would definitely make more sense then. The planetarium. The planetarium. Pam has said the same thing. Right, Lynette, there it is. The planetarium. Wow, I've never heard of that. And we went last year for daughter's 40th. It was expensive, lots of museums and things to do. Highly recommend it. Yeah, right in York, yeah. Yeah, nice. One of my school trips from Devon to London was to go to the Science Museum and then on to the Sandbanks, oh, the South Banks, where ITV filmed Blind Date. I mean, 55 other kids were in the studio watching Scylla Black. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. I bet you had a lot of, lot of laughs, didn't you? Eee! He's good. He's good. Surprise, surprise. The unexpected hits you between the eyes. The unpredictable, that's the surprise you see. Surpri oh, there's another blue lights. An ambulance this time. What's going on? Has a bomb gone off or something up there? It's looking like a bomb's gone off or something. <laughs> it's crazy. Next to Madame Two Swords is the plan planetarium right. No, look, Lynette moved to London years ago. I just chaperoned my daughter and three friends to appear in a TV show in London. Guess where I took them? Wow. Surprise, surprise. The unexpected hits you between the eyes. The unpredictable, that's the surprise you see. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise! She was great, old Scylla, wasn't she? Way before my sort of era. You know, the peak of her singing career, but then she done Blind Date. Hi guys, back. No, you. I don't, I'm not sure if you've missed any fish, Jay. It's been awfully quiet since it started. It went quiet. So if you haven't seen anything since it started going quiet, a Laura Laura laughs. Snacky Jan, a Laura Laura laughs. Madame Two Swords. Yeah. I like the one, the Arnold Schwarzenegger one in there where he, you know, they replaced the statue with him. <laughs> and then people are taking photos and obviously he comes to life. <laughs> if you're still on, I will jump back on, Will. Okay, mate. Yeah, well, we'll be probably 
shutting down around about midnight because the bite's gone well dead here. It might pick up as the tide turns, but it's it's not looking like there's a lot going on at the minute. Someone found a chicken sandwich in the co-op. Oh, very good, Kelly. Very good. Someone found a chicken sandwich in the co-op. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Is that where it is, is it? <laughs> is that where we're at? <laughs> Someone's found a ticking sandwich in the co-op. <laughs> and that's what all the bomb squad are doing going up there, ladies and gentlemen. It could be an exercise. Yes. Yes. They all motor to the gym with their lights on and then jump out and do star jumps when they get there. <laughs> it's an exercise. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Surprise, surprise. A ticking sandwich in the co-op. <laughs> oh, that's the surprise you see. Surprise, surprise. I mean, it's high tide, so they won't, they won't have found any ordnance on the beach. Dicking and teas. <laughs> Dicking and teas. Scotch egg with a live fuse. Oh, explosive. It wasn't mine, I had pork pies tonight. <laughs> Right, what time is it? Let's have a look, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look. 23.07. Right, I'm going to open the other packet of worm because there's tons in there. Fun, we won't get through it. I mean, that's the bigger one. We had a tenner's worth of worm, which we've got through, and now the other bag's got over a pound of worm in it. So we'll start getting some slightly better worm on some bigger stuff. Well, well I'll have a look at it, actually, and see what's in there. That's the surprise you see. Surprise, surprise. It's heavy. There's a lot in there. Right, we've got a ton of ragworm.
for a lucky one. That tide's going out, yeah. You want to get some longer casts in now. See if there's anything in the channel right over there. The unpredictable, that's the surprise you see. Surprise, surprise. That's my earworm now. That wind's picking up. It's getting a bit chilly now, that wind's hammering us. Chilly winds, ladies and gentlemen, that are chilly winds. Be nice to see a bite. Well, it'd be nice to see a four pound fish. We had the opportunity just when we got here. I wasn't expecting it to fish like that when we arrived, but you know, we chucked those baits in. But it looked like we were going to have a crazy mad night with constant bites all through. But it's suddenly just gone very, very quiet. Very, very quiet indeed, Mr. Bunt. and chilly. Alan's back. We haven't had the big one, Alan. No, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened, unfortunately. Not yet. We're going to stick it out till midnight and then we shall vacate the area. Because what we don't want to do is use too much of that new pack of worm now or it won't be worth using it tomorrow so we want to just go easy on it for a bit until around midnight then we'll shoot off and then that will leave us enough to have a go at somewhere else tomorrow to be honest I thought we'd hammer for all that bait here tonight Jerome from the Netherlands has joined us here this evening Jerome how do you do so the folk that are joining us in the later part of this session will be joining at a point where the bite has dropped off. Those who were here at the start saw some proper madness. You lost a big something and Drew's mate lost a snake on the edge, got snapped off. Yeah, oh, you're up the wall. What, and you've just lost a big fish there as well, Alan. Man, I should have gone to the wall. I should have gone to the wall, but we've got ragworm, it's no good. I, this is why I need to get through this ragworm bait and get the heavy baits back out on the on the good marks. That wall's fishing at the moment. Oh, I can hear some road rage.
Sounds like road rage to me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Might not be road rage, but that's what it sounds like. Root and toot and road rage. <laughs> oh, I should have gone to the Hasler Wall, ladies and gentlemen. Should have gone to the Hasler Wall. Looks like there's a load of big conger eels swimming around there at the moment. The unpredictable, that's the surprise you see. Surprise, surprise. Mind you, it's been fun here, you know. We had a good pull down from that bass. So I'm, I'm pleased that I've come here. I'm just thinking, you know, we should have gone to the Asla Wall. Because <laughs> I always fish big conger baits at the Asla Wall. So I know we'd have had a chance of a big conger as they're swimming around there. Fuming, ladies and gentlemen, fuming. The unpredictable, that's the surprise you see. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Jess Florence, how you doing from Texas? Jess, welcome. Are you new or have you been in before? I know we've had a, so there was someone that came in from Texas a little while ago as well. Because it always reminds me of um, Shania Twain for some reason. Some big bites here in the beginning and it just died off. Yeah, Jay. Yeah, they were there, weren't they? Yeah, Steve, it's, it's amazing. It's crazy how quiet it's gone. I honestly thought we were going to hammer for all that worm in, in no time and and be left high and dry with no worm and, and a four pound fish along the way. We're still getting some cracking bites. They're loving the mackerel. Yes, Drew, yes. I brought my secret weapon bait the other day for congas. It won't be a secret when I start deploying it, because of course I'll tell everyone. But I actually specifically brought a bait that's done me really good, because I've been planning to go and target those big congas back where I had the last one. But we've been given loads of ragworm ever since. So it's kept us on these sort of local marks. But we're definitely going to have... We've got to get on these big congas, man. They are everywhere. They're everywhere. And they might not stay around for too long, you know. As that water warms up, they might disperse. I think now the whiting and pout are thinning out. They're moving in closer to try and hunt them in the edges. So we're seeing loads of big congas in really close. They're getting hungry. I guess that's the problem when you stuff your face and you get all fat on whiting and that, or, or on your food. For instance, if it was a human being stuffing cake all the time and getting really nice and fat, and then all of a sudden someone takes the cake away. You know, you're on the desperate search for cake. And someone's taken the cake away from the congas, ladies and gentlemen. And now they're everywhere looking for their cake. And we've got to chuck it out on the end of a rod for them. bite has gone completely dead. The unpredictable, that's the surprise, yes. <laughs> yeah, don't mention cake. <laughs> Sappening, homies. Sweet cool kids in the house. Sounds like Mario and his wacky racers have turned up around you tonight, yes. Yeah, the wacky races. They're great, aren't they? 
the Nintendo Wacky Races. Here at my local lakes I use chicken breast coated in powdered strawberry Kool-Aid. Catfish love it, Jess. Nice. Well, if it works. Jesse, paint a picture about how it's going to be. By now I should know better. Your dreams are never free. Tell me all about her little trailer by the sea. Jesse, you will always sell any dream to me. Can't wait to catch my first conga. Seems like a good buzz when you get into the big ones. Oh, it certainly is, Steve. Oh yeah, oh you'll know about it when you've caught one because obviously you learn the handling over time so when you get your first conga it'll go one of two ways you'll either embrace the moment or it'll be the worst day of your life <laughs> so yeah when you're covered in slime <laughs> It's either going to be, you're either going to think, wow, that's cool, or, ugh, <laughs> snotball, don't want any more of those. Live concert, Jess. <laughs> you, the cat, and me. <laughs> Jesse, paint a picture about how it's going to be. By now I should know better. Your dreams are never free. Tell me all about her little trailer by the sea. And Jesse, you will always sell any dream to me. Hopefully not the latter, Steve. No, you'll get loads of little, little ones, little straps. They can be frustrating. Because you get the same treatment from the straps as you do from the big ones, just not the satisfaction, you know. So you get all the slime with the big ones, you know, but you get all that with the little ones. You know, you get the risk of a bite from a big one, but you get the risk of a bite from a little one too. You know, so the risk to reward is so much better when you've landed the big ones. The little ones can just be a pest because you're having to use all the same tactics on the tiny little thing that's going to wreck your rig, slime you up and nearly bite you. But it's not something you, that's worth weighing, you know. <laughs> so yeah, the big ones are so much better. From my hometown in Memphis, Jesse calls to say hello. Can they move quick on land? No. They can't propel themselves, if that's what you mean. They can't propel forward over land. No, the, the, the freshwater eels can do that. They're actually adapted for that, to move between bodies of water when the lake dries up. But no, conga eels don't do that. They can, they can move around, flap about and that, but they're literally fish out of water on the land. But you, you just got to be careful with them. They don't intend to bite, but some of them come up with their mouths clamped and some of them have their mouth open just naturally. And they'll swing their head from side to side. And if... They hit their head, they'll just, the mouth will close. It's not intentional, it's just reaction, their reaction. And if your fingers are in the mouth when that happens, or your foot or an extremity of some kind, then you're in trouble. Because once they've got purchase, they'll spin. And then that's the problem. They're extremely dangerous. You've got to be very careful with them. 
you know, upwards, up and beyond ten pounds. You know, you you can lose fingers and that. So you you, you got to be so careful. I saw a bloke nearly have his finger broken on Town Key. Like he'd never seen a conga before, and his mate caught one. God knows how he got it up the side of the pier. I don't think he had a job now. I can't remember. But his mate had never seen one. He's like, wow, can I hold it? Oh God, I just knew it was it wasn't gonna be good. It wasn't gonna go well for him, man. He's like, Can I hold it? And his mate's like, Yeah, go on, take a photo. So we all got sort of gathered round and that with our cameras and that. Waiting for the inevitable. Like thinking it's he's gonna get slimed up or bitten. But he's gone out, oh, how can I hold it? I can't hold it. He was wriggling about and sliming him up. And his mate's gone, stick your fingers in its gills and hold it up. And he got one finger in its gill and it spun. And, and he was a bloke and he started screaming. He started screaming it because it, it spun his finger. His finger was right up in the gill and it spun. Now that fingers in the gills thing's great if the conga's massive. Because you can get a couple of fingers in each gill and just lift it off the floor. Like that 20 I had. I mean, I found a method for holding them. So when, when in my photos, in all the photos where I'm holding congas up, I've got my fingers in the gills. So that's how I hold them straight and hold them up. With their head aloft, it makes for a great photo. Um, but yeah, but... You've got to be careful that both fingers go in at the same time. Because if you get one in and it spins, it'll, break, it'll snap your finger off. Yeah. So yeah, he was screaming his head off. I think I, I, think I was with the Solent Warrior that night. But I don't know, I can't remember. I was up there with someone fishing. We'd gone up there. It was the night I live baited the pout and got a load of grief for it and then decided not to live bait ever again. <laughs> so you can chill them like a pike. You can, they won't hit your back. Yeah, yeah, you can proper, you can chin it, man. Proper chin it. You know, if it gets too rowdy, just chin it. You know what I mean? That'll calm it down. Alligator gars, Tommy. Nice. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. That's a completely crazy fish, that is. They look mean. Some Yeah, hard to find the gill opening. Yeah, they keep them closed. Yeah. Yeah, they're hard to see because they've got that layer of gel over them and it sort of hides it perfectly. Yeah, I don't know about chinning them like a pike i don't know i don't know how you chin a pike yeah sorry steve yeah i don't know how you chin a pike i know pike have got quite dangerous gill rakers haven't they so i they're nothing like a pike so i wouldn't i wouldn't go to do anything with a conga that i do with a pike yeah they're completely different in the way they move and they're just different. I mean, a pike's pretty dangerous if you stick your fingers in its gob. Any coagulant bite and backward facing teeth. But they're on a different league. A different league, the congas. You know, they're not dangerous until you're the one that's in a dangerous situation with them. You know, I'm always sort of preaching about how dangerous a conga is, but we've never had a really dangerous encounter with one. And that's the case. Then they're, they're not dangerous until something goes wrong. You know, so there's only a few people they've been dangerous to, but when it goes wrong, it can go really wrong. You know, I've I nearly lost a finger on a conga with the line, so I wrapped my arm around some line to pull a conga up into a boat once, and and the. Uh, the arm, the line was wrapped around my arm, and the conga spun up the line and round my arm, and and my fingers were wrapped in the line, and it was spinning, and it was tight, it was tightening rapid on my fingers. I had to cut the line. So there's that, 
you know if you you never want to wrap your arm round the line and pull a conger up sort of thing oh hang on tippy tappy left hand rod yeah they do require some careful handling but like I say it's only if you get your fingers in that gob you're in big trouble or, or you know mishandling can create an accident lamprey and rivers and estuaries are also something to avoid proper nasty teeth yeah they're nasty yeah uh, you won't pull your fingers out of pike's mouth no no you won't you gotta push them in to release it same as a python bite a pike is similar to a python bite Samantha Jane, hello there, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us here this evening. Where well, my throat is drying out. I need to bring more, start bringing more water with me, like two litre bottles, because like these little ones ain't enough. I've been drinking like a fish recently. Mind you, I was in the gym earlier, so I'm dehydrated from that anyway, running round on the treadmills and that rowing machine sorry I don't do treadmills you've had a seven foot one got to let them calm down yeah on the boat before you hold them up very strong yeah they do go placid if you leave them that's what I mean uh, what I mentioned earlier about touching them and and the warmth from your hands I don't I don't think they like it and they go nuts but yeah if you put them down and sort of leave them they do calm down and then you slide that sort of bait disgorger up the line into their gobs and that but, um, yeah they're so powerful they're so powerful just designed for propulsion and, and power. Tap on that left rod again. 65 pound, that's a beauty. Hang on, that left hand rod might go, you know. Something having another little look. I'm just gonna get over there and have a look a sec. So, I don't know if it's on or just trying to get on there. Might be a crab. Check the bait, it might have been a crab. Tide's going out quite quickly. Water is so flat and calm. It's nice. Beautiful. I'll just rebate this one as well. 
as we're there. Surprised that bite hasn't picked up a bit now the tide's turned. So it was just fishing on the incoming tide, it seems. The last time we were here, it, it fished the outgoing tide. There's been no wildfowls, which is strange. Usually you've got ducks and geese and swans and coots. I can't hear no wildfowl. They're usually making a racket all over the place. There's nothing tonight. It's really quiet. The birds aren't singing. I don't want to get myself at it, but it could be the curse of the old um, Jeepers Creepers dude. <laughs> oh no, I don't want to start all that going on in my head. I've got to walk back after here. Hello? 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 Is someone there? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those jeepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? I saw a fox checking out your poles once. Yes, Tommy. Yeah, we get foxes doing that a lot, actually, yeah. Yeah, we foxes all the time. Where'd you get those eyes? Where you get those peepers? Oh, it's peepers, is that the word? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Yeah, that's a good film. He's behind you. Oh, no, he isn't. <laughs> Pam. <laughs> oh, no, he isn't. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? You have a bobcat in your backyard. You live on Lake Texoma. Wow, Tommy, wow. That's pretty cool. A bobcat, yeah. Oh, there's a, a thing on YouTube somewhere of a, one of them bobcats attacking a bloke. They can be quite aggressive, can't they? Them bobcats. Oh, there's one attacking a woman. Oh, I might have seen a bobcat compilation, actually, thinking about it. The LMF Witch Project, yeah. Blair Witch, yeah. There's one chasing a woman as well, and then the husband comes over and fights it off. It runs under the truck and all that. Yeah, it's eerily quiet, Pam, yeah. Yeah, no wildfowl. Oh, I'll tell you what it might be. They might be nesting, so they're all being quiet, so they don't give their nest site away to predators. Because I think a lot of wildfowl nest on the ground. That's the only reason I can think that they're all being really quiet. 
they're all sat on eggs or something maybe it's that sort of time of year you saw a black leopard whilst driving through country lanes in Devon God's honest truth lies <laughs> I'm only joking just back from Port Solent casting practice nobody fishing around there which is surprising where's all the people gone what if it's just us, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Every, everything's gone. There's no more life. It's just us on this channel. <laughs> yeah, Port Solent. Yes. We fished that once, didn't we? I wouldn't mind going back there and giving that another go one day. Not lying. No, I'm only joking. I was kidding. You know, it sounds strange. No, that's fair enough. No, I'm not going to argue it. If you've seen it, I didn't see it, so I can't disprove it either way. Yeah, that's it, sweet cool kid. Yeah, you can fish from the car. Good bike coming in seven minutes, Tommy. Nice. Okay, what, where are we at now? 4.41. So 4.48. All right, a good bite by 4.48. It's a good time to call that, actually, Tommy, because we've only just baited up as well. So there's fresh bait out there. So the chances are you could be right. Must be getting close. Yeah, well, well, we're going to start packing up in 15 minutes. That's going to leave us a ton of worm, though. And I want to go and start it in them big congas, so I don't know what to do with it. Um, there's no one watching that wants a pound of worm, is there? To pick up from here or up the road when I'm done. We were donated way too much worm. I need to get back on the big baits and target these big congas that are out there, or at least the rays. There's good fish out there to be had at the moment on the beaches. And the tides are good now. You know, we've got high tides up around the midnight and that's perfect. Hang on, here. Oh, I got excited there. I thought that was going to go. I'll have some for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, are you able to pick it up here tonight though? That's the thing. Because I'll be asleep all day tomorrow. Once I leave here, I'll be asleep. Jeepers, those creepers. Where do you get those jeepers? Jeepers. And um, I wouldn't be able to arrange it with you because, uh, well, well, we'd have to arrange it here now. Unless you're on the group. That wasn't the bite I'm talking about. It's coming, Tommy. Ooh. Nice. Are you local, Ben? Are you around this area? There's literally a pound of worm. Oh, that was a nice bite as well. Oh, we're getting some interest in the rods here. Have to bring donuts, though. <laughs> oh, it's dreaded. Oh, right, dreaded. Oh, right. Oh, what's happening to your dreaded channel? Are you about? Are you about now? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? I mean, I could meet you with it somewhere tomorrow, but we'd have to arrange it, like I say, even now or through the group. Or Instagram. Are you on Instagram? Have you got me on Instagram? Samantha Jane, full stop. This is my personal channel, but packing up at Eastney. Just packing up at Eastney. Oh, so so are you coming back round this way, those? Is... 
Because you're, you're Selsey Way, aren't you? Do you live Selsey Way? Or are you... Are you over this way then? Is that what you mean? Are you coming this way? I could literally meet you just up at... The, oh, hang on. Oh, no. Another bite again. Up at the top of the Cam's Road by the Cam's Mill. He's having a little tap, isn't he, on that rod. Oh, I can hear a duck. We caught a duck. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Yeah, that's what the bite is. It's a duck, ladies and gentlemen. Two to three minutes. Come on, get ready. Oh. Well, I'll have to check that bait in a minute. We were getting some tippy tappy on it. So there's something there stripping the bait off. It's still there, I can see it. It's moving the rod about. It's mallard flat conger bass. <laughs> Very good. Yes. A mallard flat conger bass. It's mallard. <laughs> That's the toughest duck I've ever seen. It's mallard. Whoa, there's another nice little tippy tappy. But he's not quite getting on the hook. It's not quite big enough. I'll have to rebait that rod now because he's he's had a couple of bites of that cherry and that'll be the bait will be gone. He he might even actually be on there. It definitely warrants checking it. Now he's had a few good hits. snagged again then. We still got the other rod in with bait on though. We'll get one more chuck in with this one. Let's get those eyes. Uh, had one dog, very slow night. I'll DM you on Insta. Okay, mate, awesome. All right, wicked. Same for me last night. One dog packing up, decreasing tides. Yeah. Sean, how you doing? You all right? Yeah, we've had a fair bit of joy, but it's gone dead for the second half of this session the first two and a half hours were i mean honestly mental you wouldn't believe it looking at those rods now what we were facing when we got here it was absolute pandemonium i was fishing i put two rods in and quickly decided that we'd be fishing one because it was chaos man chaos the rods were going nuts we were pulling in little school bass we had a couple of good bites i lost a good fish and then we had a major good bite and landed a little fish of about a pound, but it's strong little. Oh, 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 the bite's picking up again. It's typical, that, isn't it? And then, um, yeah, we had a fish of about a pound and a half, which really gave us a good bite. 
It's your birthday. Go, 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 shorty. It's your birthday. I'm gonna party like it's your birthday. I'm gonna sip a cardi like it's your birthday. Scooby dooby dooby, it's your birthday. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Where am I? I'll pop over. Oh, okay, let me just reply. Um. Um, the duck was mallard. It's mallard. That duck was proper tough. He was mallard. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Right, that's on by the look of it. Maybe. No, I think he's just... That's our last chucks, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna start packing up soon. Because I have promised that bait to somebody else now, so it's only fair. I've got a feeling a nice bass today. Yeah, we're almost done, guys. I did say up till midnight and then we'd shoot off, so that's another 10 minutes. So I'm gonna start getting stuff away. I'm quite excited because it sounds like there's some really big congas moving around in the waters very close in locally and we're going to target them tomorrow. If there's one thing I'm quite confident that I can catch it's a conga eel. The only trouble is keeping them on the line but catching them shouldn't be a problem. Landing it. So if you're still listening, Dreaded, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be packing up in a minute. I was going to say something, but it totally left my mind. I had a really good sort of idea. <laughs> and it just left my mind as I was about to say it. Yeah, so I'm going to start packing down in a minute and walking up. I'll stay live so you'll be able to see me live and then uh yeah if you send me insta messages to update me as you go like if you're there and i'll just pack up quicker and stuff like that uh terry b lovely to see you there look the fish are starting to bite and now the seabirds are starting to make noises again there's an oyster catcher do 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 come on and do the conga do 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 it's conga now for sure yeah i'm excited I've had a pretty good idea for a rig as well that I think will work. I think I know, well, I mean, I definitely know what they've been doing to our existing rigs and I think I've got a solution. So I'll try, I'll try it when we're out next. <clears throat> but I'll, uh, I won't say nothing until we're out and then I'll explain the theory behind the rod. Right, I'm going to start packing up, guys, because Dred's packing up as well. So we need to coincide perfectly with our packing up and then meet at a, 
Arondes Vues, of which I have already mentioned where it will be, and hopefully he knows where that is. And I shall drop you off this worm. Because, you know, the worm baits are fantastic, but they keep us off of the, the big fish because they're fast baits. So all the little stuff's going to hammer them. We want to be laying down big mackerel and big squid and bluey and stuff like that. Right, so it's another quite early one tonight. But tomorrow, we won't have to pack up so early. We can have a night of it. We won't have to get there so early as well because the congas will fish right through the tide. We can hit them incoming, outgoing. We will be napalming those puppies. It'd be nice to get a last fish, but it's just little ones now, nibbling away at them baits. So we are starting the process of wrapping up here, guys. It's been a fun evening. I mean, we've had a good fill of fish at the start. I can't believe how dead it went. Right, let's get this guitar wrapped up. Oh, oh. Oh, hang on. Might have a fish here, possibly. I think there's something here. I think there's something here. Yeah, if he doesn't come off. Oh, oh dear, ladies and gentlemen. Oh dear, we've caught ourselves a little terror which is lucky on the last cast because he's about to destroy our rig. A nasty little nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. See how he's climbing up the line. Wrapping himself right up. It's a nice little hook. I can get it out if he stays still.
Right, he's shooting off across the grass. Wow, he's really agile. Wow. Man, he's quick through the grass. Right, we've caught a European eel, ladies and gentlemen, completely different to the congas. Yeah, anguillus, anguillus. And they create a nightmare for you, these do. See his mouth's open, like the congas. Some come up with mouth open, some come up with mouth closed, so we have to watch out for a bite with this one. It'd be unintentional, but with a mouth open, he could hit you. Right, let's get him back in. Whoa. Oh, he's well agile. Oh, come on, man, turn it in, turn it in. There we go. He's back in. Luckily, he was the last fish because he's slimed our rig up. So, guys, we've done it again on our last cast. We caught a fish. Yes, a European eel. He'll be back. Very good. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. Right, I'm going to wrap up. Let's get these rods down, guys. Get these rods down. I'll stay live while we stroll back up to the car as well. We'll just get everything down. Slime everywhere now, nasty. Right. Right, we want to break down reasonably quick, so we go and meet dreads. This reel's damaged. I think that's the end for that reel. It's proper gone all stiff and not working properly. I've got another one at home, I've got a spare, but that one I'll have to go in the shop for repair or something. 
I know they repair multipliers, I don't know if they do fix four. Oh, we'll have to find out. Hello? Hello? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those papers? Right, man on the run, man on the run. I left my other disgorger out accidentally.
Well, it dried on the outside. Roll on the summer when everything actually dries again. Oh, they're in there. Right, we're making good progress here, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just put that down, that light on, and move that to that position there, so you can see. Check my phone, see if Dred's message. Yes. No, it's right. Right. Right, there's quite a bit to do still, but we are on our way. There's, hang on, isn't there a bin over there somewhere? No. Oh, I thought there was a bin here, but there's not. Do, 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 do.
Doing okay, ladies and gentlemen. Doing good, good progress. Well, I'm just pulling the pins on the shelter. Shelter away. The things we do for love, eh guys? The things we do for love. Hello? Hello? The ground makes a funny sound. Right. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Right, let's have one more little look. See if Dred's message to say he's either on his way or there. Oh, he's ringing. Oh, no, I'm ringing him. Oh, I didn't want him to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, if he doesn't try and ring me back now, I'm thinking I tried to call. I need to get moving so I don't leave him standing there for ages. What's that? 
Right. Oh. Here we go. Oh, I need to put my guitar on the other arm or it's going to fall off of that arm when I pick up that handle. Hello? Hello? What's that? Hello? It's a sign. Hello? What is that? <laughs> What's that? Hello? Guitar's fallen off my shoulder. My guitar strap broke, so I can't carry it properly now. That's a bit of a pain. <laughs> Debbie's there, like fishing in the rain and the snow when there's no place to go. That sounds like a lyric. Is that a lyric? It's a tune. <laughs> no. Hello. Uh. Yeah. My hellos make you smile. <laughs> they frighten the life out of me. Hang on. Sounded like your brass strap broke. <laughs> no, my guitar strap broke, Lynette. <laughs> TRG, lovely to see you there. Hello, hello. What's that? Last time we was walking up here, I did actually hear a strange noise. I looked to the left of me, huge deer. St stood there. What's that glowing up down there? Ooh, is that a bit, of, just a glowy bit of stone or something? No, it wasn't, it's gone now. Let like someone drop a diamond or something. Oh, my guitar's being a pain. Uh, it was all right on the way down here because I wasn't carrying the tripod. Now I'm carrying that. It's being a nightmare, but it's okay. The soldier, hello, hello, hello. That's all right. Hello? Yeah, it was a big deer. We saw a massive deer. I see badgers along here quite a bit as well. Mind you, not when I'm dragging this trailer. Sometimes I come down here and just stroll about and look in the edges, see what the water's doing. See if there's any life in there, bass and that. But um, sometimes when I stroll down here <laughs> on the quiet, I'll see badgers. Look at all the blossoms everywhere, there's loads of it. Like cherry blossom in that. <laughs> like there's a cherry blossom in it. All the new life in that like, cherry blossom in all over the place in that. <laughs> cherry blossom. <laughs> Hello? Someone behind the cherry blossom. <laughs> Spring is upon us, Sean. Yeah, it's beautiful. Hawthorns. The candy man, no. Hello?
Hello? Has he got any candy? Will he take me to the candy shop? <laughs> Will he take me to the candy shop? <laughs> Amateur Angler's in the house. Lovely to see you there. Where are we going? We're going home, my friend. We've just finished. Well, I'm not going home, actually. I'm going to meet someone to drop off some ragworms that I've got, which I'm not going to use because I've got the buzz for the big fish. We did a day on the ragworm yesterday and then we got dropped off a load more ragworm because the plan was initially on yesterday to go and target the big congas but we got the worm dropped off. Like I say, when I've got worm bait, it's not worth going to the conga spots and having one small worm bait out, you know, and one whole mackerel. I want to hit them with two whole mackerel essentially. One on each rod. You know, otherwise we've reduced our chances by 50%. But then we got given a load more worm last night and today. Which would have seen us into tomorrow. So it would have been another day off the big stuff. Uh, you know, the big stuff, when we're targeting it, the nights can be quiet. You know, because the big bait, or it might just attract a dogfish or two, but... There's a chance of something really good when you've got them big baits out there. And from what we're hearing here tonight, we need to be getting, we need to be getting on the big stuff quick. You know, there's 20 pound conga spotted tonight. So we need to get on a local beach with the big baits. I want a 20 from a local beach. something big and bad exactly hello yeah yeah something big and bad like the boogeyman hello Uh, uh. Oh, loads of lace wings about flying round after dark. Well, one day, something or someone will jump out and say hello back. Yeah, they will. That's why I ask people not to give our location away. <laughs> the, the trouble, the thing is, we get like a troll come on every now and then. When I fish a spot that's really obvious, they just can't wait to give it away. So they're waiting for me to fish an obvious spot. If they could, they'd give every spot away. They're there for every live, waiting to do something to try and, well, just to be a fawn in your side, really. So like with that one today that came on, he's like, oh, where are you, Ferran Creek? And then he said left rod when the rod wasn't even going. And then I'm, I won't repeat the last thing he said, but I knew it was a troll as soon as he turned up. But I removed him, but he'll be back again under another profile. So, but yeah, I mean, when a location's given away, you don't know who's gonna be waiting for you when you finish. So yeah, I could be walking up this path one day when we're done and someone could indeed jump out of the bush. A Couple of them could. You never know. You just never know, ladies and gentlemen. Band, oh, hello? But don't get me thinking about it. <laughs> don't get me thinking about it. Uh, Will's give me an idea. You know, 3D printing. We invent a 3D bait printing. Um, oh, sorry. Bait printing thingy. Sprays and all. Oh, we can, oh, here we go. I'm on my way. Anywhere we can get coffee. 
that way, my shout. Uh, hang on, guys, two seconds. Let me just, can I ring him up? Oh, he's here. Oh, he's here already. Uh, hang on. Two seconds, guys. No, I'm just going to keep walking. Right, I need to move quick because he's already there. Oh, Ben, there you are. Ah, you're, you're there. All right, mate, is there a massive building in front of you all lit up? Sometimes it's got lights on it. Sometimes the lights are off, but it's a big white building. Or there's a pub. So you'll either be at the pub or the big building. What's that? A ra oh, I thought that was a ragworm down there. It's a normal worm. So if you're very close to the location I gave, I'm, I'm two minutes from you. But I'll have to unpack everything in my car and then drive down the road to you. Or if you jump, if you're still in your motor, if you drive up the long road, not towards the building, there's another road. So you would have turned off left and gone up that windy road towards the building. Oh, hang on. Oh, there's a car here in front of me. A van. Oh, is that you? Are you in that van? It's a couple of vehicles. Oh yeah, no, it's you. All right, wicked. Ah, oh, sweet, there you go. Right, I won't film your van then. Oh, wicked, mate. Well done. <laughs> you found exactly, exactly where I am. That's great finding. Sweet. All right, right. Yeah, I'll be two seconds, mate. <laughs> there you are. Hello? <laughs> Hello? I'll drop these off to you and then I'll um, head back to my motor, maybe. I'll have to end this live in a minute. Right, hang on guys. Depends what way you're going to the McDonald's. Right, two seconds guys. <laughs> All right mate. <laughs> So this first right, yeah. just go up there and then you'll see my car just there. Yeah. And I'll pull all that over to there. All right, mum. Right, guys, two seconds. Dodgy rendezvous in the middle of the night, ladies and gentlemen, eh? Dodgy rendezvous. Oh, he's gone too far, has he? No, no, he's right there. Perfect. That's it. 
Perfect. Before you've gone too far. We've frozen. Is it still frozen? Is it still frozen? Oh, you're back. All right, we're kids. We're kids. Awesome, guys. Right, I'm just going to sort dread out this skier. Ragworm. And we'll be away. You all right, mate? Yeah, the message came through quite late, so I didn't realise you were already here. Oh, that's all right. The first one came through saying about, is there a place close by we could grab the drink? And there was a McDonald's on the way, and I was going to say we could stop there, but... Yeah, no, I remember my Instagram. Yeah. It's like, it's not, it's not, we tried to send a message, it signed me out. Oh, no. And then I tried to sign back in again, no. and I went in, and then it was signing me out. I'm thinking, oh, I'm just no. up here. I didn't realise. All three, semi-fine, all three parties. Yeah, so, but at night, anyway. Just got to watch out for the flare wind. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sort of try and give that effect every time. I oh, just had my introductions out there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, missed it. How'd you get on? Loads of bass, little, little bass though. We had a couple of good bites, but uh, yeah, it, was, it really slowed down towards the end. I wasn't expecting it to go that slow. But yeah, that's a look at these. Mr. Sweet Corn Kid advised me that I should try, yeah. Uh, have a look and see. Yeah, they're they? fine, mate. Mate, it's an idea they're not to be got to work with. Oh, there's plenty. Oh, there's plenty. And it's little stuff as well, which is perfect. Yeah, yes, yeah. See, I thought we'd hammer through all that. But it actually, well, you can like hand salt it. Yeah, yeah, I've done it before. But I find that once you've salted it, if your hands get wet and you're putting it on the hook, it dries your fingers out, but you've still got to wear the gloves. Otherwise, because I did that once, all my fingers were cracking and that. Still the salt dried them out. Still going. Yeah, still going. <laughs> yeah, they're good. They're, they love it. You do your little countdown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that for, for them before we go. Bless you. They'll be loving this, Working just hard, us mate. chatting and that. Yeah, trying to keep it going. Seeing John and all that down there. Yeah, he came down. That was awesome, that was. He gave me this hat that I've got on. Yeah, I, I, I did. I did. I worked so much of it, I thought it was buffering so bad. I thought I was living in Virginia, mate. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, the worst buffering. And it's just. Years, oh, years ago, he lived around this place. Oh, right. Or oh, he must have always been fishing around this place. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, his record bass was caught in Portsmouth Harbour. Well, oh, just yeah. out the front of Portsmouth. Oh, he used to fish on my dad's boat. Oh, really? He used to go out with my dad quite a lot. Oh, wow. Does your dad do chartering, I guess? He's retired now. Oh, right. Yeah, my dad was a charter skipper. Wow. Yeah, I'm boats, shocked that the boat Falcon... called Starfish. Big, big yeah, I knew the Starfish boats. I'm sure I've heard of those. Starfish. Oh, no, or white. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Great White. Big, big white catamaran. Yeah, great white is big white catamaran. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm thinking of a different boat. Yeah. yeah, what's the one that's just stopped as well? There's another one. Not Valkyrie. No, no, it wasn't Valkyrie. I was just going to say Valkyrie, but it wasn't that. Yeah. There's a lady called Bex running it. It's just shut down. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, yeah, it's really sad to see him shut. So you say you're going to place him with the worm? Whatever comes along, really. Yeah. Whatever comes along, it's a bit of a up that Milford. Milford? Is that not at Haven? It's oh. Milford on Sea. Milford on Sea. Yeah. Milford's like right, gravel bar there. Right. It's basically opposite the needles. Oh, I think I know the one. 
Is Hearst Castle up that way? Yeah, it's yeah got you right, I'm with you. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, they have some good bass in that running through there as well. Yeah. Still at it, mate. Still having a go. I couldn't believe you had a day off, mate. I was, like, what, <laughs> I was well ill. I know. Yeah, I was sick as a dog. Sick as a dog. Yeah, I tested positive for that COVID at one point. But that's, yeah, it's long gone. That was ages ago. But, but it really knocked it out of me. And that, last night I had my first decent night's sleep for ages. You know, I just been go, 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 right through being ill. And now I was suddenly just worn out, managed to sleep. But yeah, it was good to get a good night's kit. But how many we got on? 100. 109. Right, I'll be saying good night to these guys in a minute. All right, well, lovely to see you again, man. Take care, and I hope that brings you some luck and you well, manage yeah, to bag some. Hopefully, little, little and can catch with it as well, well mate. Give that. Oh, it's only four. It's got a lone little pink oh. fishing rod. Oh, wow. So. I think I remember you mentioning that before, actually, when we brought that. Yeah, you did get that very long ago, didn't you, the rod? Yeah, that was just before I met you, a few yeah. months before I met you. That summer when I before I met you. Right. Some real short butt. Yeah, nice. Distance from the real seat to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see them you know there, the very ones? nice. Yeah. So she can move it around in front yeah. of her body without it. You give her a normal fishing rod and yeah. it's too long for yeah. her, isn't it? Yeah, catch on stuff and that. Yeah, and she loves it yeah. when she gets charged. I'd like to go on my own. Yeah, well, that's all right. I'm sure it'll teach us some great tricks with it. I'll let you know how I'll get on. Bro. Yeah, please do. I look forward to it. I say, if you want to grab a coffee, I'll gladly buy you a coffee. That's all right, mate. I'll put, what way are you heading? Thank you for the offer anyway, mate, but, you know, it's good to see you. Nice to see you keep going. Thank you so much, my friend. It's lovely to see you again. I will, uh, I'll try and be about a bit more. All right, wicked. I'll be able to react to some of this. Yeah, that's all right, mate. No, I totally understand, but thank you. I'll see you later, Dred. Yeah, you take care. Take care, my friend. See you later, guys. Dred says goodbye, guys. I won't get your van on camera, mate. Yeah, all right, mate. I'll see you later. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. That is a lovely midnight rendezvous, all done and dusted. My friend Joe, I'll just give him a wave as he goes. Fantastic. Debbie, take it easy. Scorby Kelly's there. I'll have some ragworm and Meringla. Oh, no. It's a bit late now, guys. We've just dash dished it out. <laughs> Well, that was that. That was awesome. I do like midnight rendezvous because, you know, no one's ever awake at night and you spend all night on your own and that. So it's nice when you actually meet someone else, you know, in person who's around. Because I don't see no one at night apart from McDonald's staff. So it's good. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to shut this down in five seconds. What's that? What is that? What is that? What is that in the cloud there? What is that in the cloud? The cloud's clearing around. What is that in the cloud? Oh, hang on. All right, hang on. Oh no, that's all right. <laughs> it's moving, isn't it? It's all right. Sorry guys, I got freaked out there. It's all right, I oh, know, it's the moon, isn't it? We're all right. Thanks for, thanks for the great night and thanks well for a great night's fishing. You're welcome, you're welcome. I'm so, so, so sorry we didn't get into the big one and I'm so sorry it went so quiet. I wasn't expecting that. It was just picking up again just as we were leaving typically. It just typically, literally as soon as I was like, right, we'll get ready to go, tap, 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 the rods start to go. So I think the tides just weren't quite right for us tonight you know if we were in a position to have been able to stay a couple more hours it would have picked up again but 
it just took a bit too long on the slow point you know it's, i wasn't expecting that i thought it'd probably go slow for an hour you know but it went slow for like two or three which is too long it was just out of our reach but tomorrow we'll go and try and get into those big into the big stuff what's that is that a li what is that what is that what is that what is that oh it's a leaf it's a leaf right ladies and gentlemen in four seconds we're gonna shut this down and disappear what's that what's that what is that what is that Oh, sorry. It's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, in three seconds, we should shut this down. A bud. <laughs> it's a bud light. It's a bud light. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what is that? What's that? What is that? Oh, it's a light and a rock. Oh, I like it when you find rocks like that. Because sometimes if you turn them over, there's life underneath. David Wintz, take care, mate. To McDonald's again soon, Will. Yeah, we will drive one day to McDonald's. Is it loose? No, it's not loose. I won't try and move it. Oh, in fact, that's new soil from underneath it. So something's living in there. Could be a beehive. <laughs> so I won't lift that rock. Ladies and gentlemen, in two seconds, we're going to shut this down and vanish. Ben, you're welcome, mate. No, it was nice. Thank you for the, the rendezvous. It was nice to see a bit of some life <laughs> at night. Thank you, man. I hope it does you good. And thank you so much. It was a pleasure. TRG, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, in one second, we're going to shut this down and vacate the area. And thank you for picking it up now, Ben, as well. I know it was probably a bit of a pain, but I would have been asleep and I, I just would have gone to bed and that would be it right through the day. And the chances of me catching you tomorrow would have been a nightmare. But, but thank you for coming to grab it. I'm glad it went to a good, a good home where I know it will be used. Otherwise, I'd have just had to chuck it in. So I wouldn't have used it now. Scorby Ken, your legend, the creature from the Black Lagoon. No. Where? Hello? Hello? What is that? All right, ladies and gentlemen, one second. Thank you for all the likes, guys. 335 tonight. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. And uh, just for being there, for being great company through that night. It was a bit hectic when we started. It was all a bit hectic. But it ended well. All right, guys, I shall see you on the next Local Marts Fishing Live, which will be tomorrow night, unless something crazy happens before, but I'm hoping we get out tomorrow because uh, I want to get on them big old conger eels, ladies and gentlemen, or at least give us a chance of one. So, guys, I'll see you on the next Local Marts Fishing Live. Be there or be square. Good night, all. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.